All right. Good evening and welcome to the Hanson Select Board meeting of March 19th, 2024. This meeting is being recorded by Whitman Hanson Community Access Television. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Mrs. Rain, you know the drill. I do, and it's, I can't wait for elections to be over. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are looking for citizens at large to become members of the following committees. Bylaw Committee, Cable and Internet Committee, Community Preservation Committee, Capital Improvement Committee, Cultural Council, Economic Development Committee, Energy Committee, Historical Commission, Baquan Reuse Committee, Memorial Day and Patriotic Observance Committee, Recreation Commission, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. <clears throat> Volunteer applications may be found on the town website www.hanson-ma.gov or by calling the select board's office at 781-293-2131. Nomination papers for the May 18th, 2024 town election are now available at the town clerk's office for the following offices. Two select board for three-year terms, board of health for a three-year term, cemetery commissioner for a three-year term, Hanson Housing Authority for a five-year term, two trustees of public library for three-year terms, assessor for three-year term, board of health for a one-year term, planning board for a five-year term, two constables for three-year terms, two water commissioners for three-year terms, and the Whitman Hanson Regional School District Committee pre-K through 12 for a three-year term. Each candidate private to uh, prior to obtaining blank nomination papers shall sign a statement containing his or her name and address and the town office which he, she intends to be a candidate. The last day to obtain nomination papers is Monday, March 25th, 2024, and nomination papers must be returned to the town clerk's office by 5 p.m. Friday, March 29th, 2024. A minimum of 50 certified signatures of registered voters is necessary in order for a candidate's name to be placed on the ballot. Upcoming meetings, Select Board April 2nd, 2024, Select Board April 9th, 2024. All right, thank you very much. Um, so um, <clears throat> we will kick it off with new business. Uh, vote to reappoint Mary Mercier as Board of Registrar for a three-year term ending March 31st, 2027. I will entertain a motion to appoint Mary Mercier Board of Registrar. So moved. Seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, great. Um, hey, that brings us to High Street Park Committee discussion. All right. Um, I wanted to bring the High Street Park uh, to the select board because we've had a couple of uh, meetings in which we could not get a quorum, which kind of pushed everything off. So that's what brings us here today. It's really nothing too, too controversial. Um, I'm here to report good news, uh, and we're looking for the support of the select board. Um, we have taken a vote at yesterday's meeting to approve the plan as a committee and give it to our town planner to get it approved by the planning board uh, to move forward with the project and uh, finalizing the plan. Um, so we're very happy about that. Uh, we're asking that the select board uh, once again um, symbolically take a vote of support um, in our decision to uh, move forward with um, giving the plan to the planning board for approval. So what is the plan? The plan is the, the, the drawing that we had shown. Um, nothing's changed to it. Can you just refresh? It, uh, we've covered a lot of miles since then. Can you just ref give us the high points? With It's the same plan. I mean, it, Phil can talk to it a little bit more, but it's the same plan that we've had it basically in existence for, well, I think, the past six years since it was, um, since it was up, laid out. Um, we're going to try and do this in phases, but really the left side by the water tower is going to remain uh, the, the park. We are going to have uh, roadways, parking, a dog park in the back. All this stuff is preliminary, though. I don't necessarily want to get too much into the projects on the plan because a lot of stuff can still change. It's really just outlining that the plan can go to the planning board for the appropriate zoning and waivers and whatever else it needs to be able to move forward. So. Um, we did take, before I pass it off to Phil, who knows a lot more about it than I, um, we, we did uh, to also take a vote. And the reason why I wanted to also bring this to the select board is there's issues around the community garden and things like that. There are no plans to change any of that that's built into the plans and the exact existing layout. No changes to any of those things. I want to reassure folks that, again, just because the plan 
is approved and we're going to be moving it to the planning board, it doesn't mean that all of these um, public hearings and all of these um, input in info sessions that we've been doing is negated in any way. We're still compiling lists of abutters' concerns and other adjustments that need to get made. It doesn't mean that we can't still make these changes. We just want to send it to the uh, planning board for approval. Um, Tony also wants to put the plan in our progress on the website formally. So once that's up and running, uh, everybody will be able to have access to all of these uh, plans in a more readily available way. So with that, I'll pass it off to Phil. Um, supporting what Joe said, the plan physically has been before. Uh, before. It simply is uh, laying out uh, the essentials infrastructure required for parking, tax, driving access, etc. Uh, there's also been a while back reviewed uh, and, and given uh, approval by the uh, fire chief and police chief. That was just a matter of courtesy and just general information. And what we what we said is it remains a concept, not a plan from which you would get the construction, but it lays out the principles of the different elements that are there. Uh, the relationship in terms of space. Uh, and, but a lot of the last part of it is, is the, uh, uh, the access where the road conscious follows the drivers, uh, things that are uh, in many cases somewhat what they already are and have been for a long time. But we need to create a basis or a foundation for uh, a serious progress forward. There would be uh, ample opportunity to make improvements, finalize details, etc., as we potentially engage uh, professional assistance in designing elements and, uh, and layouts that would actually be uh, very achievable and doable to be roles, but in phases. But we need to turn up the foundation for uh, all these future plans and the planning board does need to be the appropriate next place to go, but we go there without your knowledge and, and consent. Okay, I, I mean, I do appreciate that, and I think I do conceptually know what you guys are doing, but I just feel a little weird approving a plan that we don't have in front of us to go to the planning board. Like, I, I know we saw it, but it's been so long that I really don't even remember it in any amount of detail. I mean, I, and and I know you had walks and you got feedback from um, the abutters, and I know people were super nervous about um, how that might um, change, you know, kind of their their world, um, mm -hmm. if you will, you know, um, and, and, which. Of course it will, because right now there's really nothing there. Um, and there might be something there after all is said and done. And I know the thought process was to try to mitigate that as much as possible, obviously, with design. You know, you, we're not going to intentionally try to, you know, um, you know, uh, change somebody's interaction with that property, but if you are an abutter, it, we we might need to. If, for instance, parking was the big thing that I think people were concerned, like it would be really close to their backyard, and you know, like what would that mean if there were events and stuff like that? So I, I mean, I I don't. What do you guys think? Do you feel okay just yeah. sending it to town to the planning board? If I'm the only one who, you know, I. I I, I'm well, we have to listen to what the butters are saying. I mean, that's not a... So uh, for, so for the planning board, or is the planning board basically going to just kind of tell you, like, conceptually pitfalls for the unwary type of thing? Or are they going to have hearings on it? I'm it, just trying to figure it, out what... It makes it more formal because the town planner can now actually do something with that plan and actually make adjustments that okay. all these all right. people need mm -hmm. and want to hear about it. Oh, good, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. So, so can we join me to print it? Yeah. You can print, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that'd be great. Yeah, whatever yeah. helps Thank with you. the conversation. Because I, I do want to remind everybody that we did already approve this plan right. as, a, as a select board. Yes, we did. We already went yeah. through all this process. The previous select boards have also approved this plan. Nothing has changed over the years. Right. It literally just allows us to take the concept and be able to actually make adjustments now. Rather okay. than t making it a, a this... Um, It'll... So it allows the town planner to make adjustments. Yeah, it, it also a, allows us like, to, to actually yeah. make uh, progress towards grant writing and all that. We can't okay. do any of all those right. things okay. because okay. Not, everything's still in 
I use the term loosely because I don't want to confuse it with what uh, Phil was saying, but it, it still it takes it from concept to conceptualization. It, it's it's right, as of right now, it's an idea. We're trying to turn it into something that's more tangible, okay. so we can actually do something with it. And, and I think do, the townspeople yeah. deserve progress on this after so long. And you do need grant money, and Tony does need to be involved, Mr. Jeffrey, as the town planner. I don't want to mean mean to be so casual and refer to him as Tony. Um, does need to be involved if he's going to be. Yeah. You know, like applying for grant money and um, okay, um, I feel yeah. Um, a way I would put it is that what we're doing is we're taking and putting them on the table rather than having them in the air, so to speak. And on the table is where you can potentially have hearings, you can uh, pull it off and make changes, bring it back. Uh, it's a basis for making solid, uh, moving from concept to its hopefully to it's an actual product. So it's a starting point. Correct. It's, okay. This is actually is the starting point yep. now, to your point. Thank you. It takes it, because we we were just, we've been talking about the conceptualization of this for so long. This actually creates a starting point to say, this is not to say, and the reason why I want to make sure that as a select board we talked about this in public meeting is because I want to dis dispel any type of issue in which like next week, even next year, we're breaking ground and just putting, we're not doing any of those things. Mm -hmm. Doing this plan does none of those things. It yep. just gives us a starting point. Okay. There's still lots of public hearings, lots of conversations have to happen. And how, there's the farmer market area, which is yep. very near and dear to Mrs. Rain's yes, heart. Yeah. Uh, yep. And so, um, how will we? How will you guys? Um, and maybe this is to be determined. And I'm totally fine if that's the answer. But how? Um, how will the priorities? You know, how will you decide? Like whether the playground is more important than the veterans memorial or the event area and pavilion? Is that something? Is it really just going to depend on like um, grant opportunities? Um, are you going to come up with a preliminary list of what you hope the priorities will be, but kind of have to roll with the punches to see where the money comes? In. So we had a fantastic meeting last night with um, some architectural designers, landscape designers, that gave us some good input. Um, it's hard for us to make any decisions on anything at this point until that plan is approved so we know actually what we're working with. Mm -hmm. Because the planning board could come in and look at this and say, well, this is a great plan, but you have to move this. Or you, you we need, need a setback. Right. Blah, 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 we, blah. we have yeah. no idea what we're actually yeah. working with right now. So mm -hmm. this really is a very uh, well put together doodle on a napkin until somebody takes it and then is, you know tells us what the actual definitions are. Okay, cool. Um, did anybody have any questions for Mr. Cummins or did I do a good job? Mr. Weeks? Um, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that will help us going forward is um, with, again, the right kind of input and solid information, we'll, we'll know more about costs. Right. As well as matching up with resources. That might help us with our priorities as well as desires. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I imagine even though we might have the best of intentions in setting priorities, the money may lead us in terms of what the priorities are, well, wherever that it's comes. Also, town meeting will as well because yeah. we're not we can't spend money without people yep. allowing us yep. to, right. and that is where we're going right. to be asking people for money. So yep. that's going to set our priorities as well. We have a, we have so much talking to do now, but this gives us uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Can I kind of say one thing though? I kind of. If I was going to point at something that we would start with, I think we should start with the playground. I agree. I really yeah. do. That's where yeah. that's going to draw people in, and then from there we can go out. But I think the playground is where we're going to um, so the most yeah, bang. One of our members has been championing the playground for about seven years. Okay. And the tradition part would be for her children. Now she thinks it might be for her grandchildren. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we Boy. see that as being an attraction to the town. Right. Uh, open. Uh, 24 7 dawn to dusk, weather permitting, right. once it exists. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, yes, Ms. Green. If, if I may, um, please don't forget that we have that earmark mm -hmm. um, for the Plymouth County Hospital site that this would include. Yes. All I need is a scope of work and a budget. Um, yep. It's about $56,000, and I can submit it, and we can get that process going. So okay. just a little reminder on that. All right. Um, so I will entertain a motion to approve um, the High Street Park Committee um, moving this plan onto the uh, planning board. So moved. Seven. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support. This is a long time coming. We had a really good, uh, you know, but brief celebration around this because this is many, many years in the making. And yes. This is a huge step. So we oh, really appreciate um, yeah. everyone. That's awesome. It. Thank you very much.
Uh, any questions about the access control, you know we're going to be looking with the fire chief at, at potential improvements. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Clements. Um, and that brings us to Ms. Green, relocation of veterans officer office. Ms. Green. Yes, um, Madam Chair, uh, Vice Chair, members of the board. Um, in, in talking with our veterans agent and in speaking with our um, Council on Aging director, um, the Council on Aging off building would be a much better um, location for our veterans agent. Um, here in Town Hall, he shares an office with the registrars, so it's hard for him to have people come in um, and you know meet with him because he has to kind of adhere to their schedules, things like that. So, um, moving him over to the senior center is is a much better fit in this particular area um, because he and Mary Collins often um, need to contact each other because sometimes the services overlap. Um, and over at the senior center, any veteran that walks in that building uh, will be greeted um, appropriately. Uh, they will show them to Joe. If Joe is not in the office, they will take a phone number and a name and provide a message. So um, it, it's a very, very good move. Where are they going um, to put him? So right now they're building that new office space. Yep, yep. He will be going into that office space um, when they're not using it for meetings, which is not going to be a regular um, event. So he'll, he'll sit mainly in there. And if he has to move maybe to where the hairdresser is, because she's only in there a couple days a week, or there is a um, historic room in the library that he could also utilize. So. Um, that that's a, a very good location for him. So we are going to begin that transition um, as soon as that little office space is is more um, complete. So we're going to try and push that through um, for a couple of weeks to get him over there. I think that would be a better environment for yeah. him and for the folks coming to talk to him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all of the way around. And there's a lot of synergies between. Um, what he's doing and what uh, Mary Collins is doing. So, and they, um, they might find it a very welcoming um, area, welcoming place, because there are veterans who who do mm -hmm. um, find a, whole, a welcome home at the uh, senior center, and and they sit and, and they chat. So, it may be more welcoming to other veterans who might be intimidated and come to town hall. But yep. if they go there and they see the atmosphere, it will probably open them up um, to a whole new world. And um, I think it's a very good move. Well, I thought it was a lovely idea, and kudos to you, Miss Green. Um, did anybody have any questions? Um, well, okay, good work on that. Um, and then that brings us to approve request for Cranberry Council of Churches to use Cranberry Cove on March 31st, 2024, sunrise service beginning at 6.30 a.m. I will entertain that motion. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right, and then that Madam brings Chair. us. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. Oh. Um, may I just have a, a motion um, to relocate the veterans officer to the council on aging? Oh, certainly. Um, so um, I will entertain a motion that. to relocate um, Joe Gambakis, our veterans officer's office, to the senior center. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Great. Thank you, Ms. Green, for keeping us on track. Um, old business. Discussion regarding possible school override. Um, I had an opportunity to speak to the chair of the um, Whitman Select Board and the chair of the um, school committee uh, yesterday just to kind of check in uh, because we had had that conversation about maybe having a, a three-party conversation. Um, I believe Ms. Green forwarded everybody uh, the information that tomorrow night will be when the school committee is setting the assessment. Um, so I think it's a bit premature for us to, to zig or zag since we don't know what the, um, you know, what the assessment's going to uh, be set at, but we certainly need to um, be ready and be agile um, depending upon what that amount is set. Um, and, you know, and I did just sort of tell both, um, you know, Chairman Stafford and Chairman um, Kowalski where we were at, that we, what we had discussed in open session that, um, you know, to the extent that, um, that, that that assessment didn't come down to a point um, that we had felt comfortable with, um, that we might entertain an override, but if we did, it would probably be a school override. Mm -hmm. um, that we not, we had not officially really voted on that yet because there wasn't a need to. Um, and that uh, that combined with uh, 
Mr. Madden's presentation to us last week indicating that next week next year we would need an operational override it seemed um, ill-timed for us to try to do an operational override this year which with such short notice um, such short such such a short runway as they say because um, we really need to educate people on what that money would be used for for an operational override um, and even if we are going to do an operational override next year if the board decides that's what we want to do we've got a lot of education to do about what that means how it would work whether we would do the five million dollars up front whether we would break it up into you know annual um, you know overrides what the average tax bill how the average tax bill would be impacted um, and uh, lots of lots of lots of questions and I think we would need to do some um, educational forums where people could come and ask questions um, where people could come and voice concerns um, I, I don't I would really hate to have um, town meeting be the only place that people could come to talk and voice concerns or ask questions or um, you know just have us thinking about some of you know people's concerns and questions um, in advance so I, I as I said the runway is too short uh, for us to do an operational override this year I, that's my opinion I, I know we haven't taken a, a vote I don't know what I think we kind of had already discussed it generally. I completely you know. agree. Okay, all right. I, I mean, uh, did anybody want to... How are we going to be able to afford it this year? Are we going to be able to get to... Are you talk, talking about doing it next May or this October? Pro pro probably May. Oh, yeah. um, and in terms of this year, uh, Ms. Green, did you want to kind of, and Mr. Ken Scherf, kind of talk about what preparatory work we've been doing? And, you know, we're, we're not going to, you know, like, absolutely wait until tomorrow night and then start clutching our pearls trying to figure out what to do we've been you know sort of think, thinking through right. different scenarios um, none of them are particularly um, bright spots <laughs> um, but we, we are working through it um, so Miss Green I didn't know if you wanted to kind of um, so I did I did watch the school committee meeting from last Wednesday um, and Superintendent Simonac um, did propose a um, number of scenarios uh, with some different cuts. Um, so basically you all have a copy. I did ask our town accountant to plug in the percentage, the percentages that he was um, referencing to uh, based on each level of cuts. So you do have a little, um, a sheet that will show you based on the different percentages that he had um, stated on what the assessment would be, the increase of the, you know, the the increase from prior fiscal year assessment, um, change of percent, and then what our budget shortfall is with these assessment figures. Um, now we don't know what direction the school committee is going to go into, um, but this will give an idea of of where we will be should any of these assessments be voted in, um, which still brings us to a budget shortfall. Um, however. Um, Mr. Kinchoff and myself sit every week when he comes in and we go through the budget and look for areas where monies can be released possibly from our past articles. Um, we also talk about the different departments. Um, and it, this is unfortunate, but it's a reality. We have, a, um, we have an employee in our building department who's out suddenly. Um, it, it, and this could be a few weeks, which means the building department is going to be operating on a reduced schedule because there's only one employee in that building department. So this will give folks a vision, a view of what town hall could become if we were have to, if we were having to go in a direction of cutting staff. Um, so it, it's just it, it's just a view, um, but this is what we may face if we have to cut staff and I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to Mr. Kinsher. So, um, so basically where we stand right now, if the school, we anticipate the schools at a 5% increase, if we have a 5% increase with the schools, um, the town of Hanson will have to use free cash to fund the budget. There's no doubt about it unless you want to cut the operational budget. Um, so, you know, 
you'd have to use like a lot of one-time sources of revenue to get through this year. So that includes like the 5% at the schools, which we're budgeting, and we, we could balance the budget this year. So I guess the choice is, um, like for policy-wise for the board, would you want to use free cash or would you want to implement budget cuts this year? Because that those are the alternatives. We're either going to use free cash to um, balance the budget this year, which would get us through one year as another B and D, or do the budget cuts this year. So once we know that, then we could probably move forward. Now, if the schools are in excess of that five percent, that leaves an additional problem where we may just have to have a school override for that amount over and above the five percent. So that's kind of bottom line where we stand. If you want to use free cash, it would probably be a lot easier. You know, it's basically hold your nose. We know it's not the best thing to do, get us through another year. But if you want to, um, next year if the override doesn't pass, then there's no doubt about it. Just get the layoffs ready, unemployment, and so forth. But I think you can get away with it this year by using one-time sources of revenue. If you don't want to do that and you want to have an altruistic view, nope, I want to structurally If it's at 5%. If it's at 5%, right. And then if it's at the 6.69, we're getting, yeah, it's... Then we've got a cut. Yeah. And there's just no, there's no wiggle room. Right. There's, yeah. How much free cash do we have? Um, right now we have like 1.4 million. So it'll wipe out the whole thing? We'll yeah, pretty everything. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. About two -thirds yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how many in, I mean, I'm just looking at the town meeting here, just if you happen to know off the top of your head, roughly how much we have in expenditures in the town meeting. Oh, for that free would, cash? Yeah, that, that would... Thank you very much. So based upon the so based upon the Warren articles that we currently have, we have um, three hundred ninety-six thousand dollars that um, is targeted to be used from free cash. So I think we could still balance the budget with the million dollars that's left over from free cash and still fund all these free cash articles. Okay. But that would leave us with It would leave us with nothing. Right. Yeah. And have we, I'm sure you have, but um, are there any um, grants, um, reimbursable grants, and uh, are any um, allocated money that has not been spent or any of that type of? Well, what we could do is like, because if we're if using free cash for the operating budget, that begs the question. What if we need capital money? And there are pockets of money that we can use for capital expenditures this year. There's an account called Sale of Real Estate on the books for 265000 And any project that can be borrowed for, you could use that. Um, Lisa's identified some unused articles that, pe that projects are over. We could reappropriate, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in articles to use capital projects. So that... For the capital piece, yes, there's no grants for operating budget. No, it, no, really, just yeah. for the we could, because yeah. I, I di because we keep getting into this place where we're not investing in our buildings, and then we wonder why they're in a state of disrepair. Yeah, I think it's an opportunity to use some pockets of money to do some investments in the building, even though we're using a lot of the free cash for the operating budget. But there's there's still ways to, um, you know do some investments, at least this year, we're using some pockets of money, you know, like you could probably pull together like a half a million bucks from old articles, funds and stuff to... But assuming that we use a million dollars out of the operating, I mean out of free cash, we're already putting ourselves a million dollars. Oh, absolutely. If everything year. stays the exact so, same, you're a million dollars. Yeah, so we're you're at least two million dollars. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're just... And, if, and people yeah. say, well, if we cut the budgets last year, now we have to cut, cut like twice as many people. Well, right. And then yeah. if, let's just say we go the route of cutting staff, right? Yeah. We're cutting to get down to a million dollar savings, roughly. Right. So how many more are we going to cut next year if we're going to continue down this path? Because yep. all, if, if we're taking the path of just cutting and cutting and cutting, at a certain point, you have nothing left to cut, and you have a whole bunch of empty buildings that are falling apart because you have no yep. staff and you have nobody right. in them. So, so we have a pretty... I, I guess, from, from my perspective, uh, and I'm just... I'm, I really am just speaking rhetorically because I know everybody here is working hard. It's just... I remember when we went through this last year, the very next day after town meeting, I remember saying, like, when are we going to start attacking the budget? We have to start on day one to figure out what it's going to look like. And I feel like we're just in this 
hamster wheel of the same conversation well, every single day. Well, I, 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 no, 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 just a second, Mr. Kinsher. I would say at that point, we had just engaged John Madden, and we knew that we did not have the data. We had simply had no data to make any decisions last year. And so what we said was that we were going to have John Madden come and give us, now we've got that. Uh, so now, if we don't act, it's on us. We, yeah, we knew we were going to be a million yeah. dollars in the hole. Yeah. So we, don't, we yeah. don't need John Madden to tell us that. We knew this. So, but yeah. Um, so I'm just, for this, it's, you know, come May, again, we're going to be in the same, the same type of boat. So even if we solve the problem today, just like last year, like, what are we going to do for the future? Like, that's, yeah. that's the biggest thing. So, um, yeah. And that's why, like, people live week to week on a paycheck. Yeah. If you're going to use a metaphor, that's basically yeah. make a decision. Like, you live in a week to week paycheck. You know, yeah. that's basically... I, I mean, I, obviously, I'm hoping that the schools settle at the 5. If they do the 6.69, I mean, what what are we, you know, what would we be looking... We're looking at cutting... Or, or what are you saying? Town hall staff, are we saying? Okay. okay. And have you discussed this with the department heads? Not yet. Okay. No, not yet. I, I, I want to know, have more more information to provide before we, we go that direction. Yes. But, but are, there, are there these pockets of money that can be pulled together and looked at before we start layoffs and everything um, else? The, these pockets of money can't be used to, for the operating budget, like to fund salaries, to fund our budget. They only can be used for, for basically capital projects. Like that one, for one instance, I'm looking at like 265,000 sale of lots account. That can only be used for capital projects. It's on in the buildings. Law. On the, yeah. Well, any project that you could borrow for, technically any project authorized by Chapter 44, Section 7 and 8 of the Mass General Laws. You so there's use restrictions it around. Yeah. It's okay. not, right. yeah, right. it's not right. like free, yeah. you know. So really our options are cut, cut the operating budget, which includes, which is the, the, 90% of any budget is yeah. staffing, so cut cut people, spend free cash, assuming that it comes in at a number that we can actually use free cash, or some type of override, whether it be a school override, operational override. That's, that's right, and the, and the free cash, um, we don't have to wait. This free cash is certified from last year, that's left yeah. over. So I think you have the free cash to do it, yeah. but just going in with your eyes wide open, yeah, like, you're paying the mortgage with, yeah, the, yeah, with, with the, the last of your savings account. <laughs> you're paying, you're paying the mortgage yeah. with the credit card. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I mean, I understand. I, I don't want to use all of our free cash, but I also just, I just don't think we have enough time to do an override, an educated, to do an override that's meaningful with the data that people need to make an informed decision. I just don't think, you know, trotting that out at, you know, in the middle of March for, you know, May town meeting, I, I, I don't think that that's the right thing to do. And luckily you have um, the free cash, like sometimes we would have that to use because you, you wouldn't have been able to buy the time but if we're having the same discussion this time next year that if for a month though it doesn't it you does it's inevitable you are going to have to you can't i'm only agreeing to this if yeah. if we all agree that we know we need an operational override next year i i because we can only pull so many genies out of uh, uh, you know yeah. well i was going to use the wrong analogy i was going to say genie out of a hat but genie we can only pull so many rabbits out of a hat um and you know um but again, it's a bit premature. We don't know what the school committee is going to say. I just wanted us to wrap our minds around so when we're meeting on April 2nd um, that we, you know, and we know what the time constraints are. If we do decide we're going to do um, any kind of an override, we know what um, Ms. McDowell said her time frame is and what um, Ms. Sloan said her time frame uh, from the town clerk's perspective is. And um, so we'd need to let everybody know um, by, I think it was the 13th of April, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, so that would give us the 2nd and the 9th of April to decide whether or not we were going to do um, any kind of an override. Um, and as I said, I I personally don't think that um, if we're, if we're going to do an operational override, I think we need to have more data to, to support the fact that it's operational and not just for the schools. What more data do you think you need? 
I, I would want to know that that we have not lived within the the five percent that we have been spending money that you know that we did not agree that we should be spending, and I do not see that. And do you think the schools would give that to us? Is that, is that who you're asking for the data from? No, no, no. The schools, the schools, they're clearly asking for more than five percent. There's no. There's no gilding that lily. Yeah. Um, so um, well, I, I guess I asked like what what because people are going to. It was sort of a rhetorical anyway. question. Like okay. I'm saying, uh, you know, we, we need it, but I don't. We don't have that because it doesn't exist because we're living within yeah. within the budget that right. we all set for ourselves and for the school. The town is living within that budget. Right. So, um, so to me, it's a school override. I just don't, and I know others disagree, and people have told me, well, a school override has a very um, you know, um, very small chance of of passing, um, which then is going to you know then it's going to be this domino effect because um, the school will have a budget that an assessment that they've set. We will say it, if I'm just waving like a magic wand as though this is going to happen, um, and um, let's say that we said we were going to have the school um, override uh, for this year. If that doesn't pass and they've set the assessment, then we, it just puts this whole ball into motion that is just not going to end well. Um, so personally, I, I, I don't see how we don't have an operational override next year. What that amount is and whether we break it out into five years or whether it's the large dollar amount that... You know, Mr. Madden talked about um, at our last meeting, we can cross that bridge, but I, I, um, we just can't keep do, you know, using free cash. We can't keep doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not gonna have it next year to use anyway, so. All right. Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I, I meant, meant to acknowledge you, but I'm just looking, staring at you, thinking mm -hmm. you knew that yeah. I was acknowledging um, you. We keep talking, going back to the 5%. I never, don't think we as a select board ever voted on 5%. No. I think the number we voted on was 3.8 or 3.9. Um, and I think basically we're never gonna go less than 5%. I, I, I understand that, unfortunately. And I think, but I think if we went to 3.8 or 3.9, it would be 150,000, about 150,000 less. So this would be a lower number, but I know the school committee is never gonna be able to agree to that. But I, we keep saying 5%, even though we've never voted on it. So the, are we going to vote on screen, it? Where did the 5% come from? from I, I, I'm ba basically, um, when John Madden in his report for Whitman, he put 5% as projections. So mm -hmm. I know we have a Whitman select board member, but that's basically where we got it because we figure if Whitman enhancement and sync would be more realistic. So that's kind of where we, where we got it. Yeah, just kind of pull the number. As a do swag. you guys want to say a lower number? I, I don't think we can, but I think we, we need to vote on five or, or, or do something on five if we're going to go with five because we never, we never agreed to five as a select board. We vo voted for a much lower number. Well, we're not, I mean, not that it in all honesty, we matters. haven't voted on right. anything right. having to do with, right. the, with this. Um, we've just been sort of hypothetically talking about numbers. We haven't really voted on anything. Um, do you want to vote this evening to say that we um, don't want to exceed 5%. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what that would really achieve because really we still have to hear back from the school committee on what their assessment is. But if philosophically that's, people want to feel as though there's a united front and that we're on the same page, I'm totally fine with that. I, I will defer to you guys. How do you want to handle that? I, personally, I don't have a number in mind. Personally, it's just a matter of what they can justify the spending on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I only need two points of data to make a decision from my perspective, and that is what the schools tell us that they need that we feel comfortable with being able to provide. Mm -hmm. Like that, just by default, like you want to be as you want to stretch the dollar as, as as far as humanly possible while still providing a high level of services. So whatever they need. I'd like to see how they justify that. Then the other piece of data is the finance committee and what they tell us they think, because when you were talking earlier about needing the data, the finance committee does a great job of like combing through every aspect of the budget and telling us where we're you know, probably overspending, where we need a little bit more funding. They do a really good job of like taking the ownership of that. 
So the minute I get those two points of information, I feel like then we can make an informed decision. But I can't make a black and white without having the, the recommendations in front of me. I think, Mr. Sullivan, I think you had agreed on the 5%. I mean, I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I believe the last time you were here, you... Yeah, so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. We were preliminary, preliminarily using the number that we talked about with it's last week, uh, the town account. And that, is, that was our belief that we could support that for one more year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, it causes us to expend all our free cash um, or, their, or, you know, their bonds. And, and then we have to be serious next year about, uh, I would say, incorporating the recommendations from Mr. Madden for mm -hmm. next year. So, yes, we can go one more year. Um, you know, we put, us, we put off capital improvement quite a bit around here. Yeah. Uh, but we've been doing it for... I've been doing this for 10 years, and we've never seen a capital matrix that we've stuck to, and we've never seen one usually before town meeting. So it just says to me that, you know, I think people on the capital improvement committee as best they can, but we don't take capital improvement seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, we never have. I will say the year you were deployed, we actually, ironically, we did. We gave them money and we got the matrix. No, it's true. And then we got the matrix ahead of time and Frank was on his game. I, I, I think yeah. as an overall, yeah. though, you're right. Yeah. I mean, because I've yeah. been on the committee oh, sure. for, for as yeah. long as you have been aware of it. And you're 100% right. We never fund yeah. it. We don't take it seriously. So, yeah, we can, the 5%, I think, as Eric was shown in his figures, we can make it work one more year. And we keep saying it, but I think we've finally hit the end of the road mm -hmm. with using free cash as an operational, as a truck for our operational budget. What is that magic number that we're supposed to have, the percentage of free um, cash? The magic number usually is like, the combination of your free cash and your stabilization fund should be like 5% of your right. revenues. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, think I will bring up just one more thing that we still haven't done several years now. We haven't put any money in the stabilization. I was just about to say that. Oh, we, yeah. we, I, I hate to say this, yeah. but we actually did do yeah, it a couple years one, ago. Yeah, yeah we but did, yeah. that one year. Well, um, that one year, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it didn't, didn't make it, it, yeah, it was, yeah. it was not enough. And we don't, nothing towards OPEB, like a whole, uh, like all of that. Yeah, um, and we're legally yeah. bound to put it a percentage towards capital improvement, and we can't do it, because we keep using it to, to pay our bills. So it, it's not lost. Uh, as a committee, though, I'm, I am curious, do you guys approve? Do you approve the use of spending free cash this year, or do you recommend? I use the word recommend because I know I know. Yeah, we just the my the whole committee just got the report last mm -hmm. week after so the number of cents. Mm -hmm. you know, I know that while we haven't voted any actions, I know as a group we are not fans mm -hmm. of using free cash for the operational budget. But we are realists as well. We are realists in the fact that sometimes you're just not going to get there. Um, and so, you know, I think that we, had, we did have some preliminary discussions about incorporating it. There was some, there's, some, there's some clarification that has to go into Mr. Madden's five million. Mm -hmm. it's, it's five million over five. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And what, what I think you have to make the citizenry aware of. <clears throat> If while we are approving a $5 million override, it is the, the select board that decides how much of that is taxed, right? Mm -hmm. Every year the budget comes out, that's an imaginary number. There's no real, there's not a bank account where this money is sitting and we go draw from it, right? It, it's, it just gives you the ability to tax that high. Mm -hmm. So if year one, I think Mr. Madden said in this report, we need about 2.5. You would only tax to the 2.5, and then the rest of it would it would be available going forward. Which again, no one likes to hear higher taxes, but everyone thinks that five million. I think the perception among the town is that five million would hit your taxes that September mm -hmm. or November. That is not the case. No, Mr. Mann was very clear. Yes. Until we draw down on it and use yeah, it, then absolutely. And I, yep. When you're when you're approaching it from an override standpoint, presenting it to the town. We just have to make that, make everyone aware of it, right? Because we all know the people out there who will say, $5 million, are going to spend it all the first year, and they're going to raise your taxes that whole first year, which isn't the case. I mean, you know, you all are elected and have to answer the, to the voters, so you have that power uh, to control the level of taxation of the need. And that's where, 
uh, I would like to say that the income has always been as conservative as possible with the town's money. So bumping the levy up by five million isn't in our best interest to spend that five million. We just know that we have that going forward to get us back to the And do you guys recommend an override this year? We haven't officially voted it. Um, so I can only really speak for myself. I can tell you the temperament is that I have been, I have done the math and for years thought we needed a, a significant override to get us over there. So five million to me is the right number. You know, Mr. Madden's done the numbers, he's been doing this for a long time. We need to approve a five million dollar override to reset us to a base level. Now that's not to say, again, We've kept a very conservative fiscal budget year after year. That's not to say we're going to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not we've got no, a million no. dollars spending. Yeah. We're still looking at it as, you know, I like to think the board is, the, the think of is very conservative when it comes to spending the town's money. We always have been. We're good stewards of the town's money, coupled with the fact that the select board, you know, always tries to keep taxes in line, you know, even if we have to increase it. But, Everything's increasing. Everything's getting more expensive. So how can we think that your taxes aren't going to go up? So, so I would say, while we haven't officially voted, I would say that the majority of the group is leaning towards uh, the you know, for next year or this year. So I, I what, this just year before you came in, we were talking about school override, operational override, mm -hmm. and since Madden had suggested the operational override. Uh, you know, next year, most of his stuff was based on next year, so, uh, you know. So I just remember the last time we had to do an override. It took a lot of education. Exactly. A lot of groundwork yep. to get people on board with the override till we finally convinced people that, hey, listen, you know, your taxes are only going to go up $100 or 100 whatever it was. It was a nominal amount. I, I think it would be tough to get it done by the I agree. I don't think... You know, unless we we're able to really rally people around it, but it's already, you know, we're already, um, I think, you know, we're due to have the budget presented so that we can have it printed by the end of April. Mm -hmm. You know, middle, middle of April. So we're really about a month out from having to have this done, and I just don't think we have the time to uh, educate and gather the support for $5 million. So my recommendation would be go for the full five next year as a full yeah. operational override. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all the different entities in town reel that number in and make sure that we have it. But it just, uh, it's, I, I just don't think we have the time. I, I don't think we've got enough runway. That's, uh, that's yeah, I just don't, uh, especially if we were going to do a five million, I, there's a lot of education that needs to go into that. People have to understand the mechanics of because there's a lot of misinformation being put out there. Um, so we've got to get the facts to people about how it would work and, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't think we have enough time. I go back to the um, the whole bylaw thing that happened at the town meeting with no education. People were up in arms. Yes. They didn't know what was, yeah. what was being proposed and it went down in flames and I don't want to see this Because it was happen. inadequate education. Exactly, or, inadequate yeah. education. We need to have people understanding why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Mr. Kinsharf. Um, that's it, I think. You know, I just want to communicate. I think everybody's understanding exactly where we're at as far as that by 25 budget goes. And so the only thing I might add, I don't even think it's worth it, but I'll add it anyways. Just mechanically, the way that would work would be at town meeting, you'd vote one budget without the override, and then you'd vote another article putting the extra money in contingent upon an override vote. That's like mechanically how it would work. Yeah, we have done that before, yeah. yeah. So um, we've, we've definitely been through that process um, so um, okay um, any other questions guys no, so, so we did have, you want to take a vote on the uh, I just I, I, it can even be informal are we are we all good with five percent I mean is that our number I, I mean to Not find good I, I think where we're at is sort of um, we know that Whitman got the Madden report we're trying to calibrate with them because if we don't calibrate, we end up in the super town meeting and that doesn't right. do anybody any good. It's just right. a lot of administrative costs, gnashing of teeth, pitting partners against each other. And right. so we're just trying to calibrate. Um, and as we always have, but now we actually have yeah. data to try to calibrate with. We've got the study and the, you know. Yeah. 
Right. And so, I'm not sure if I'm looking at the numbers right, but you're talking about if we we have 1.4 million in free cash, if we spend 4.4 million, we'll have yeah. 1 million left over, which is about how much the budget shortfall is if we do 5%. You, you, Am you I just reading took, that you right? took the words right out of my mouth. That's, basically that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So I just, I don't want to necessarily belabor this point, but it just seems that the numbers that, that were being provided right now are e eerily close, no matter how you do it, to the amount of free cash we have. We so have $44,000 left. So, it, but if they come in at 7.68, they wipe out the free cash. Yep. No capital um, projects. 6.69, they come in wipe out the free cash we can do some capital but not i don't think anything we we wouldn't want to do we would probably want to put something in our rainy day fund at five percent we could we have just enough that we can pay everything out of the free cash but then the remaining capital projects will wipe out the rest of our free cash mm -hmm. so just no matter how you do the math it comes out somehow to 1.4 which is exactly what we have so, and that's assuming. So, yeah. even if we go that route, you might be looking at an override even if you don't want to do an override, depending on what this number comes in. I would like to see us really try to push to the hold to that 5%. I really would. I, I think that we're not the only ones that should be, have to cut budgets. I agree. I agree. I, I, I mean... Okay, so we're, we're going to, as a select board, going to try to stick to 5 and not 3.8, but because times have changed since then. That's fine. And not what? No. That's a five percent increase for the school, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm not good with that. All right. What would you like? Because we. I wish, think you, you know, should stick to the three point eight. Okay. Okay. Huh? And you feel three point eight too? I feel three point eight, but I'm go going to be reluctantly saying five. But I would prefer three point eight, of course, because. Like what are the what the rest of our town budgets, the rest of our town departments, what percentage are they going up this year? If we're going to count the school as a town department, which it I mean isn't. Without each one, I mean each one different, but there are some, you know, three four percent increases in there. Yeah. So. It, so it averages. That's, that's, I think that's what we've yeah, found but it's the tough because I think it all depends on what it why. Yeah. You know, you could have like uh, snow and ice numbers mm -hmm. going up, and then highway. You know what I mean? Like right. it's a little tricky. Yeah. But all our other departments are sticking to three point eight by the sounds of it on app by on average. And we're making a case, and I think that's the thing is you know, um, and I, I I would really I've I've said this honestly. I'm even boring myself with how often I've said it, but I just I really would just like the school department to be like another department head 100%. and just have come and make the case to us just like our department heads do to what and we shouldn't have to attend school committee meetings we're we're elected to be select board members i, I you know I, and, and it didn't always it wasn't always this way ruth used to come and provide that information to us at meetings um it, long before i was a select board member that was always the way that it was done and before ruth um gilbert whitner was dr McEwen. Uh, used to come to the to the meetings and provide the budget and answer any questions and somewhere it's jumped the track and I've I've communicated this ad nauseum to everybody the school committee to the administration to the town administrator to uh, I don't know what else to do so um, they, do they just refuse to come like would do you say hey would you mind just come and giving a you know 20 minute Half an hour. What I, what I was told, I, this, I will say this year I didn't make a request again because um, for the last two years I was told we have school committee meetings, you can come to our school yeah, committee yeah, meetings. No. Um, it, so, I, you know, I, I just don't think if they came here and, and gave us something, you would, have, you would reach a wider audience of people that would be able to either ask questions or get behind your cause if you're looking for more transparency and more. Yep. More support. I mean, all of our other department heads, if there's some anomaly in their budget, mm -hmm. we know about it. They come and talk to us about it, and we have an understanding, and they're working with each other and talking to each other and saying, well, you know what, I know you guys have got this big cost this year. We'll take one for the team, and there's some, you know, sort of like coordination. And I'm not expecting the school department to coordinate with our other departments, but I would like to have that direct communication. I, I, 
again, I'm boring myself because I say it every year, and it's just not happening. Well, it's almost so. like they're they're omnipotent, and whatever they decide they're going to do, they're going to do, and I don't think that's right. Well, I, I vowed, and I'm sort of quasi-breaking my vow already this evening, that I'm not going to take shots across the bow I'm this not trying year. To take shots across I'm the really either, but it's trying budget. to just state the facts, and I am stating the facts. I, I, I um, am... Um, crestfallen that I can't seem to impress upon anybody how important that is. And it's not just for us, because it's for the town, for the people, those five people at home that watch our meetings, um, you know, to, um, to hear how does this impact the town of Hanson without, without the, um, you know, the rest of the school committee meeting and all the stuff that they talk about, just budget, Hanson, budget, school, how does that impact us? You know, narrow the focus. Um, and But we just don't seem to be able to do it. I will continue to say it and continue to bore myself and everybody else with it. But um, so thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. That was helpful. Uh, Mr. Kane, since you're here, was there anything you wanted to share with us? Um, no, I think our conversation is very similar to your situation. So really, I just want to be here to listen and show support. Um, one line that I think maybe you do want to pay attention to a little bit when you're thinking about sustainability over time is the Plymouth County Retirement Fund. The Plymouth County Retirement Fund is definitely a budget buster for the next five years. Yes. But then after five years, there is a significant drop off. I had no idea how big the drop off was going to be, but if you look into that number, it's, it's really substantial. It's not like 150000 For us, it's like over a million dollar drop off from that line in five years. And I think, I didn't hear, I listened to Mr. Madden's presentation. He did mention it, he didn't delve into it, but he mentioned it, yeah. Just making sure he's aware yeah. of that or giving some perspective about that long term. Mm -hmm. Mr. Can I just comment on that? Yeah, so basically, you know, all these, all these towns aren't funding OPEP, so like, plan-wise, the idea is everybody's saying, once those retirement assessments drop off, we can use the difference and fund our OPEP. That's a good idea. That's basically, so when we go to the bond rating agencies, you know, we say, hey, what are you doing about OPEP? Oh, we're just going to wait. Once this drops off in five years, we're going to find <laughs> That's a great the idea. difference. Yes. Yeah, so. That's a good yeah. idea. Um, okay, any further questions? So did we want to take a vote? I'm sorry to keep circling back to this, but Ed, you keep saying we didn't take a vote. I don't know if vote. we need a vote. Okay. It needs to be informal. It's up to you. All right, okay. So Mr. George is wants the 3.8. Everybody else is, I, I, I don't know how, I don't want to say okay, but resigned to 5%. I don't know how, how to describe that, but 5% is where we're at. Um, I'll go to zero if okay. you want. Oh, okay. Mr. George is getting controversial <laughs> down the other end there. Okay. I go to, I go to um, zero percent. All right. All right. Thanks, Eric. Um, Ms. Green, I know you've got to go join the um, the FinCom meeting. Did you want to quickly whip through a town administrator report or did you um, want to forego that or? Well, I, I do have some, so I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly give you um, what I have um, in my town ministry report. So um, I have some exciting news. So I don't know if you remember, I don't know how many months ago it was, that we were awarded an earmark of $100,000 for uh, the um, subsurface utility engineering for the Evington Rockland water pipe. Mm -hmm. Finally get the email with the contact person and know what we need to submit now for to get access to that money. Um, so we are working on getting the proposal with Great. the with the scope of work. Um, I have the contact person, so we are pairing that information um, to get it to the Mass DOT uh, so we can finally move forward with that. Um, this has been months and months and months and months in the making, but here we are today. Uh, thank you to our legislative partners, Senator Brady, um, former Representative Josh Cutler's office, uh, for partnering with us, the Old Colony Planning Council, all of these, um, all, all of these entities, these people helping us get that earmark hundred thousand dollars. So we are well on our way finally. So now, that was great news. Miss Green, uh, wasn't that the McQuan Tip Project? It is. It is. It is connected to the McQuan Tip Project that. Um, the Mass DOT is requiring this to be this um, evaluation to be done to that Abington Rockland water pipe to determine where where it's located as far as um, its proximity to the surface 
and possibly along the line of where um, the work will be done, what condition the pipe is in. I understand, but I understand that today we were told by um, Old Camp Colony Planning Council that the McQuan TIP project has been taken out of their queue. I had not heard that. I believe that email came out today. Oh. So we may want to think about whether we're going to spend that money. Okay. All right. Well, I and we may hmm. also want to make inquiries into Old Colony Planning Council as to why we would be jumping through hoops like this mm -hmm. to try to meet their requirement and appealing to our state legislators to have them do this at the last minute. Okay. I hadn't even seen that email Okay. Yet. Well. Um, so I'll, I'll follow yep. up. Mm. Oh, okay. I don't mean to well, be a I'm sorry to be a Debbie <laughs> Downer. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Um, um, okay. Actually. Um, um, all right. Uh, well, is there anything on <laughs> okay, okay, keep going, Miss Green. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, that's okay. That's all right. Um, okay. I, you know, I had just, I attended a legislative meeting on Friday um, where um, town administrators, where Mass Municipal Association, um, sends out their legislative uh, partners to give us updates on legislation that's um, brewing that impacts municipalities. Um, the new cannabis host community agreement regulations, um, stormwater, wetlands protection, the Municipal Empowerment Act, those are um, regulations right now that are going through the system. Um, hopefully, if all of these are, are, are um, signed into law. The Cannabis Host Community Agreement, um, that does not work so well with municipalities because it basically could invalidate all human host community agreements um, across the board and cause municipalities and cannabis company um, retailers to enter into new agreements. And Hanson really is not too much involved with that because we only have a cultivation. Um, the Municipal Empowerment Act is really important because it loosens up some of the procurement requirements um, and some other requirements. So we're going to watch this all very closely. Um, and today, Select Board um, Chair Laura Kemet, myself, Member Ed Heal, um, and a number of department heads attended a table talk exercise um, at the fire station. It was coordinated by Fire Chief O'Brien and the Massachusetts Maritime Academy cadets. Um, it was a wonderful exercise. It exactly. really um, opened our eyes to what we need to do to prepare for these extreme weather events that have been happening. Um, it really opened our eyes in, on the work to be done here, but um, really kudos to Chief O'Brien for coordinating all of this um, and, and having this exercise done. It was really very well done. Um, select Board, and then again, our office, uh, Select Board Office, we're regularly working on the warrant to prepare for town meetings, regularly working on the budget. Um, of course, we're watching the Whitman Hanson Regional School District School Committee to see what they're gonna do with their votes. Um, Wednesday, March 20th meeting, 6.30 p.m. is when um, they have an agenda item to vote the assessment. <coughs> um, and last but not least, again, I kind of mentioned this at the front, um, our building department is going to be on reduced hours for the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, we, have a, we have an employee who is out. Uh, please check the website, Facebook, um, other social media platforms for the department head hours. Please call ahead before you come down to Town Hall, as our building inspector does need to go out to conduct inspections. Uh, their phone number is 781-293-5503. And um, just to report to the Mass Trails Grant uh, for the Bay Circuit Trail Relocation Project, the closeout report was accepted by the Mass DCR, um, and we received the uh, money today, which was $100,000, and that uh, finalized the report. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, so you're going to go uh, meet with FinCon and then hopefully be down with us for executive session at yes. some point? Okay, yes. great. I will be back. All right, so next on the agenda is um, the um, town meeting, um, May annual and special town meeting. Shall we just uh, quickly breeze through? and just uh, get a familiarity with what we're looking at. Uh, let's start with the main special town meeting. Um, we've got, you know, little housekeeping articles, I would call them, um, including the ARPA money that we had already discussed, which is Article 2 with Lisa, uh, for the culvert repair, pond management, and ambulance. Um, then we've got um, something for grading, which we always have for the filling in potholes and grading. 
Um, Article 4, Ms. McDowell, um, any expenditure of community preservation money can only be proposed by the Community Preservation Committee. It can never, ever be proposed by anybody else. That's according to the Community <coughs> Preservation Act. So I know Mr. DeFreyes was overseeing that and sort of like he was the proponent, but it has to be proposed by Community Preservation. Um, then we've got the Pratt Place Culvert, and that pretty much is it. There's no real meat on the bones there on the special. Um, then if we look at the annual town meeting, we've got treasure, oh, this is great. Our new treasurer collector um, has um, got some suggestions on uh, checks and balances. For instance, no debit cards because they're so, those are so easily um, used um, fraudulently. Um, and um, also some banking and various other changes. Um, and then we've got the town clerk salary. Right to farm, shall we get into it? Um, so article four, we had voted to include this. Do we feel, no, uh, do we know what we're getting into? You know, do we know, because uh, I can't remember who the heck it was who was telling us, and I thought you were there for this conversation, but maybe you weren't. Somebody was telling us that they had passed the right to farm and there were pitfalls for the unwary, because if you didn't, I don't even know. No, they, I, I wasn't there. For okay, that they one. had a whole well, list of things that if we didn't think about it, it could cause a problem, yeah, I, and I... I, I I had heard that, and it, and it oh, was. Oh, maybe you were the one who was. I with didn't. Me. No, it wasn't me. Okay. That, but it, I, I, somebody on the planning board mentioned that this really should go through the planning board. The right to farm should. The right to farm. Really? I think it was that because they just, just we need an overview. What what does it mean? You know what I mean? That, what does that's it mean? actually a good. That's actually a good thought, um, Mr. Hill. Ms. McDowell, I'm wondering, could we possibly refer this article? I'm not saying that they absolutely have to approve it, but I would like to get the planning board's thoughts on this article, mm -hmm. um, and maybe for that matter, ZBA as well, because they may have some yep. insight that they want, um, and also the agricultural committee. But are you guys it's, even meeting? It, it, it ha that has right, so it's, it's kind of it's been, just a name only kind yeah, of. Thing. As a matter of fact, I believe in the town offices it's been disbanded. Oh, okay. I'm not sure, but uh, although Ruth Sylvester got her letter that she was re-upped. We, we've never officially taken a vote to disband I know, the agricultural. I, know that. So I, don't I mean, it may be just because there's can no I, people. But. I, can, I can just answer a couple of things here. I mean, we don't have very many pieces of property in town that this would absolutely cover. I mean, the Sylvester Farm, the Old Cottage Farm on Route 14. Yeah. Um, I think there's another one down the other end of Macron. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I, I mean, I'm racking my brain. There, there's only two or three pieces of property. It would be nice to give, to offer them the protection that this does, but this does not help individual people that have, you know, I, my friends over on East Washington Street, they have enough land, but they've taken their land out of the farm beca uh, because of uh, money needs, you know, yep, yep. Mon monetary banking stuff. But, you know, there's not, there's not a lot of people that this is actually going to cover. It does, it, it, it's true that it does raise property rates. People like a right to farm town. I'm, I'm the last person to disdain this, but what are we protecting? I, I'm in favor of it. It's yeah. just that I know somebody had said, well, you might be in favor of it, I, but there's pitfalls for the unwary. I want to know the pitfalls because okay. I've, never heard, I've never heard downsides for the right to farm. You know, maybe it was Kate that said, you know. It was Kate, somebody in the, in the audience. I remember they were sitting here. Okay. You, I, I do remember uh, So that. I'm not just. Rem no, it was okay, during one okay. of our meetings. Okay. It was right. somebody was who was sitting. One of our meetings? Yeah. Somebody oh, was sitting in the audience and they said. You know what? Was it Michael Fleming from CBA? Yeah. Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah, it was. All right. It was, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it's all coming back to me. Yeah. Was okay. on, he was on the board with us. He yes. Him, yeah, he knew. Yeah, he yeah. Had referenced uh, you and something. Yeah. I remember it vaguely. Yeah. I've never heard anything a downside to it, but no. that doesn't. But I don't know much about it. He so really know. felt very passionate about it, and I, I but I did, couldn't quite glom on to the contract. So let's refer it to planning and ZBA. Mm -hmm. Not that you know it's the end, but all be all. And if they push back, that we won't still put it on there. And then um, can we just have get. Do you guys think we should have Kate just review this? Has she already reviewed it? 
Yeah. Fine. I, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think sure. Yeah. All right. I, mean, I just never heard a downside. I'm fine with it. I just wanted to yeah, make no, sure no, we were no. responsive. The, the one thing that's not mentioned here is that there are specific land requirements to meet the definition of the word farm. Yeah. It has to have yeah. so many acres, and the one acre that the house is on can't count. I wonder if that's she's reciting Mass General laws. It, it, that's where it's so, all defined. Which is great, that's except to your point, though, I think we should probably try to spell out a right. little bit of it. Right. Because who the heck's going to look up Mass General right. Law Chapter it's all 90? It's defined up in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, this was presented years and years ago. Yep. Yes. To tell, and it failed because people didn't have an understanding of what the details well, and of the was. was. A couple of cows of, being kept in subhuman yeah. conditions That's and people lost failed. their minds. And yeah. also it failed because there were yeah. real estate people that spoke out vehement, vehemently against it. And I don't understand why because it doesn't harm. Property yeah, that was weird. I don't know. Mm -hmm. so, okay, yeah. all right. So we'll refer to, to that and maybe see if Kate could expand on the Mass General Law piece of it. Yeah. Um, Article 5, 84,000 for pond management. Um, I know Ms. Green has had Mr. Scalinger, our conservation agent, working on um, connecting with other towns to see what they're doing for pond management. We've had Mr. Clements come here and make a passionate plea for us to start getting some kind of a pond management uh, program in place. Um, I personally spoke to a um, couple, well, actually all of the Plymouth County commissioners and said, I think the, the county should take this on um, because you've got all these different towns that have got oh, the same connected. problem and we could get better buying power if we were all handling this together. Um, and I think that there's um, a meeting that I think you guys were all invited to with the Plymouth County. Thursday. Yeah, is it this Thursday? It's tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. boy, it seems. It, is it no, tomorrow night? Tomorrow's Wednesday, but is uh, it tomorrow? Uh, yeah, Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday. Um, at... Cast and flagon? Yes. Yeah. So six thirty. Um so um at I'm six, gonna mention it again. Six o'clock. Because I mentioned it at the old colony planning thing when I saw yeah. them and then when they came to give us the check and, I mentioned and it Sandra again. Sandra Wright did talk about she has that they have that dredge they yes have, you know, they've got equipment yeah they've got equipment they've got access to equipment yeah um, and that's the other thing is maybe we could share some regional equipment you know we don't all have to try to do this reinvent the wheel ourselves but somehow we do um okay <laughs> so there's that um article six this was uh, miss green had talked to us about increasing the fees for uh zoning enforcement because right uh, zoning violations right now we've got no teeth I mean, 50 mm -hmm. bucks, people practically tell us to go packing. Like, who, who really mm -hmm. cares? 50 bucks. Um, so that increases that. Then we'll have wage and personnel. Are we having that this evening? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 745. So, yep. So we'll go over that. Oh, thank you for keeping us honest. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll have that. Um, and then, uh, oh, so number eight, um, at, and this rattled around in my brain, and uh, this is not true. Town Council's comment is inaccurate. Okay. What happened was um, years ago there was a, in at town meeting we voted to create a recreation commission. A commission has to be voted at town meeting. We did that. That's awesome. Then Mr. Melissa came to us and said we don't want to call be called the recreation commission because we're not really doing recreation. We're only doing Camp Kwani. So we voted to rename them the Camp Kiwani Commission, which therefore meant that the actual Recreation Commission, which we now need to create, is defunct according to what the town meeting votes were that was taken. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. I, that's what I thought it okay, was. I so, just need a confirmation. So now we need to that. recreate the Recreation Commission that we renamed the Camp Kiwani Commission. And if you can follow that, then you get a prize. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, Article to, 9. Well, to be clear. Oh, Yes. We're not reinstituting the Recreation Commission, which was called, which what we turned it's not to. Back camp it's yeah. a we're new we're creating a brand new, brand new. distinctly different yes. Recreation Commission. Brand new, shiny, yeah. different mission. Yeah. That's fine. I just wanted yes. confirmation yeah. for that, so I'm, I'm happy. If we were creative, we'd perhaps call it something different, but I guess we're not that creative. <laughs> <laughs> um, Article 9, uh, that is... Um, this is good. This is um, tightening up timelines so that we've got adequate time to work with citizens' petitions. Um, as you guys know, we've had people just sort of volley incomplete 
citizens' petitions, maybe with not the greatest legalese and mm -hmm. uh, doesn't give us enough time to pass it by legal counsel and then get back to the petitioners and maybe present something that's actually actionable. So, um, so that is what that is. Um, these are capital improvement items, which I was glad to hear from Mr. Kinsherf that we might be able to do something um, with that. Um, and then this is to increase the capital improvement expenses to cost over twenty thousand. Um, make that change. It, it, uh, yeah. It's at thirty-five thousand. We want to reduce it down to twenty thousand yep. so we can make be more transparent okay. with people. Put yep. more things on the matrix. That totally makes sense. Um, and then so the town of vote to amend the town, town of Hanson general bylaws, deleting first sentence, da, 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 da. This would reduce, oh, they need to reduce the FinCom membership because I think they're having <coughs> problems keeping that number of people and getting a quorum. Um, and then this is classification. Then we've got. Um, Can I, just before we skim? Yeah. This probably should be included with Article 7. And the wage and personnel yes. stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you agree? As are the we major on personnel are we on 13? I'm still reading 12. Yeah, we were on 13. Oh, yep. yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yes. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, 14, laptop uh, for, from ambulance revenues. Um, again, this is fire chief. He's taking it from his... Um, free cash or available sources, electric blankets and what have you. Um, the 16 is the annual required community preservation article so that they allocate the money into the buckets that they need to. Um, article 17 is something, uh, Webster Billings, I guess we're gonna, uh, was not accurate. Just, oh, this is some housekeeping article. It looks like we didn't properly register it or some sort of thing. Um, and Article 18 is um, that soccer field that they did at the middle school ended up costing a little bit more than they had predicted, so they went back to community preservation and asked for another 50000 but they also got grant money, So, uh, but this article is to sync up with the additional 50000 they need. Um, additional hours for the planning board assistant, MBTA communities, um, which is controversial. I'm not... Kind of, I'm not glossing over it because it's not controversial, but there's really not much for us to talk about. What I am hoping is that the planning board has a very good proposal about the process they use to get to the to you know where they are with what area they're proposing, what the ramifications are if we do not pass this, and all of that. I mm -hmm. hope the planning board is going to do a good job of prepping for this because it's. It's their article, so. Has that request been put um, in for the, to the planning board? Pardon? The, the planning board knows that, that you want them yes, to do that? Yes, I have okay. said that to the planning board chair, and maybe not so um, lovely a, a way. Um, okay, and then um, Camp Kiwani, um, that's, you know, their, their budget. Um, then reduce applicable from eight to two, ten for, Oh, this is the Board of Assessors had proposed that we, um, this is for hardships, um, so for financial um, hardships for property tax deferment. Um, then there's the, uh, we had had um, Ms. Stolfer and Mrs. Cafardo come and speak to us about the um, using the money that we had previously allocated um, as ARPA funds um, to be used for the grant uh, for the li library. Then we've got um, buh, 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 something about pumps for the water department, which is water money. Um, 30000 for the Conservation Commission to replenish their funds. Um, the age-old eradicate invasive phragmites at Smitty's Bog, ever present, ever green, um, and then we've got what is this? Ed, do you know anything about this? So Whitman Which Street one, Conservation Commission, three thirty thousand square foot vacant lot on West on Whitman Street on Whitman that we're being offered by some 
I don't know. It looks like you guys took a vote on it from the Conservation Commission. Is it sounding familiar, ringing William, a bell? I mean, no more than it's... That's okay. Uh, it's fine. I didn't mean here. to put you yeah. on the spot, but pr it's from the Conservation Commission, yes. so hopefully... Under, um, conservation. And then we need to do key card door access at the fire station. So that's excellent. And then... Um, increase the do we agree with the I, I don't think we've actually discussed this one um i think yeah. miss green had proposed that the state change the ability uh for towns to impose a sales tax of one percent right now we're at 0.75 percent um what 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 are people's thoughts particularly since this is being proposed by the select board and we haven't discussed it. I just yeah, thought... This caught, this caught my eye last week. Huh? <laughs> this caught my eye last week. Okay. I didn't know where it came from. Uh, well, I mean, we have gotten revenues. It's been a actually very steady revenue stream and it uh, so you know... It's easy to keep at 1%? Yeah, and it all, honestly, it it's a rounding error, really, in the average bill. Is it 1% um, though? Is it like 1... It's point oh oh. Is it like one percent of a penny or something? Yeah. Because it's not. No. It's yeah. You know what? You're right. Um, it's point. It's point oh one. It's point point oh one. It's point oh one. What do you say? It's point two five. That's one percent. You're it by point right? two five. Exactly. Yeah. One percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I just remember when we first put this out there. Is it one percent of the actual no. bill? It's one percent. I thought of it was one percent of like. A fractional or a nominal percent. It's a one percent of the bill that's added. On, it's added yeah. on to the six point two five. So it's a true one right. percent. It is. It, it, it's it, a it will hundred be a, dollar hundred dollar bill. It's, it's a buck. It's a, it's a dollar. Yeah. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Big whoop. I know. But it all adds up. And actually, I, I miss. I wish Miss Green was here to tell us what the dollar amount. But it 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 was rather impressive, really, for just that little. Yeah, I think the first time added? we did it was like forty thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, a quarter, I think. The the amount we got the for the past year maybe be added to the explanation or that's a great idea. Yeah. Um to, could you know, maybe she could say historically, you know, this has gotten us blah blah blah. We obviously don't want to commit to anything because we don't know what sales you know, the past sales will be future sales, but um, you know, if we could get get a little something or at least if she could be prepared to talk about it. Um Yeah. I'd like to eat a little bit more on it because I, I am curious if it's if it's a true one yeah, percent. It's a real significant. It no, it really because uh, I've seen it on the bill. Yeah, but, it's, but you don't even you have to look for it because honestly you don't really even notice yeah. that. Yeah. It's so it's only going up, up a quarter of a percent. Right? Yeah. So instead of paying seven, you're going to pay. No, we're seven not adding a percent five. at this time. Correct. We're adding a quarter of a percent. For what? No, one percent comes back to the town. We, we get a, if you buy like a, a salad wrap at Walmart yeah, I know. or whatever. Yeah. It's one percent of that. I just remember it being. Maybe it's it was an additional the first revenue time we did it. I Walmart, thought it was like Walmarts and Halifax. Walmarts and well, if they were here, yeah. <laughs> well, we're the only and town those, in the area that doesn't. Right, but not most other towns are doing seven five. Uh, they, the state just changed this. Yeah. This just is something that, so I don't know that anybody else has made any changes. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just become available. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, this is. Is that regulated by the state? They're the yes, the state, state so the state is the one who says, says this is the max you can, you can do. Yeah, that's the max you can do. I think we were one of the two last say year what? when we did this. I think we were one of the old, one of the two towns in the area that didn't have a, a meal yes. tax. Right? Yes. So it turned out we were getting taxed by all of our surrounding towns when we go eat. Um, right. Pembroke, Canover, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, uh, Article 30. Uh, the roads, yeah, the, yeah, the roads. roads the, our, chapter 90. We have to do that in order to spend our Chapter 90 money. Um, then this is the... Um, oh, this is just the housekeeping of annual budget lines. Um, and then uh, $15,000 for the animal shelter. Where are people at with that? I think it's are they progressing when I mean, Lisa's been working on it. I know she's Lisa's been working on it. She's um, she's got volunteers. She's got volunteers. Um, she's I believe um, redo on the fence. Charlie right. Baker. Yeah. She's got people that have donated products and right. blah blah blah. I just want to make sure since it's being proposed by us that we're. Well, I I want to you know. see the animal shelter happen. I I, okay. I I can't. I didn't even realize back in the day that we had gotten rid of the pound. I don't even remember any 
dialogue about it. No. I think it just happened. It just the, happened. Like yeah. in the middle of the night. Yep. Yeah. Um, what is the 15? Is there? Is that like a, a number that actually has like numbers? Yeah, yeah. It, she's got to do the it. roof. They, um, they've got to paint. They can't. There's like uh, board of health regulations. There can't mm -hmm. be any like um, rust. Is yeah. all, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, but is the 15 yeah. like has to be re galvanized or something? Yeah, like that. They're, 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 yeah, she got estimates, so it's definitely um, okay. da, 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 for accepted. This is a chapter 90. I'm not sure what the difference between this and the prior one is, oh, yeah. but I'm sure Miss Green can describe that to it. These seem like redundant, Lynn. Article. I was told I didn't have them, but I thought I did, so maybe. Okay, because Article 30 31. seems sort of like 30. Or 30, 30, 33, and then 34 sort of seems like Article um, 31. 30. Well, no, 31 oh, okay. is yep. Yep. kind of like Article 34. Yep. Right? I think she didn't see them, and so she thought I missed them. Okay. I just put them in again to make it. It can come out. Okay, and there was one other article, um, as you guys will recall, or you may not, but a few years, in 2021, um, we had an article um, for, um, let's see, how do we do that? Uh, that, um, that required that any contractor in town that had not finished a project oh, yeah. um, would not be able to um, basically continue and do a new project if they didn't take care of all of the things that they needed to take care of from the prior project. It had to make it through the state house. It had to go through legislature. Okay. It's in the process of going through legislature. Um, I just thought I'd update you on that. But um, we also passed a bylaw that same year that said all um, town departments, whether elected, um, town departments, committees, and boards have to record, whether by, by audio or video, um, their meetings. And this was an attempt to inc increase transparency so that if people actually can't attend all of these meetings, which is hard to believe people wouldn't have the time to do that, but um, that you could just at your leisure bring up the meeting, listen to what was discussed. And yes, minutes are great, but uh, minutes don't always capture the full flavor of the meeting. Well, um, we have had quite a few uh, boards and committees that are not posting um, those audio and video recordings. So um, I think we need to do something about that, um, Ms. McDowell, um, aka you're subbing in for Ms. Green, so I'm just sort of saying this to you as both. Um, and then similarly, I would like to find out whether you guys would be interested in having a bylaw in this town meeting warrant that um, requires the boards and committees to post their minutes and their agendas on our website. We do not have anything that does that. that they are not required to do it, and some of them are not doing it. I would, I would suggest we do do that, and it, at least that's then known that that's the process you need to follow. Right now it's voluntary. Right now, it's voluntarily voluntary, and we've been encouraging, and other and people have not been picking up what we're putting down. It's not voluntary to record the meetings. It's not, but they're still not doing it. Right. Um, and it is, but it is voluntary to post, post the minutes, them, and it's yeah. not required by the state right. to post minutes, and um, and and it, you have to post them, but it's not required to post them on. The website. Where do you post them? Well, according to the law, you have to post them. And I, uh, I mean, this is hard to believe, but this bulletin, but like literally the yeah. law requires the bulletin board in the lobby here. Because what could possibly go wrong <laughs> in the lobby <laughs> exposed to the elements of posting an agenda? Right. Right. It, it seems extremely inclusive for everybody that might need to get to it. Are you talking um, about agendas or minutes? Agendas have to be posted. Right. What about minutes? minutes? You do not need to post, but they need to be available if somebody asks for them. Oh. I would like to require that they minutes. have to be put on our website, right. and I want to require it from both elected and appointed boards. Um, I, I, I just don't see, without video recording or audio recording and posted minutes and agendas, 
uh, you know, we complain people aren't engaged, mm -hmm. we complain people don't show up at town meeting, we complain people aren't educated, and if we aren't doing something to try to help people get that information when and where they need it, I, I just feel like, you know, so do you guys agree that we would like an article that requires boards and committees, whether elected or appointed, to post minutes and agendas on our website? I, I I think it's a good idea. What do you think? How are you going to enforce it? They're not well, I'll get to that in a okay. second. Do you guys think that that's a good idea? Yeah. You, you're doubtful. You're getting a doubtful doubting Thomas look. I don't know what's. No, going it's on. no. I think it, I, I would just defer to to town to town meeting. I guess. Yeah, well, no, no, but I know, but I'm just saying included in, yeah. yeah, included. Oh, please, people lost their minds about us asking them to videotape and audio record their meetings. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Why would you possibly have a problem? Um, so, um, all right, so can you, okay. Um, and I think I even sent you, because I had drafted something back in 2021, and Ms. Federoff had said to me, oh, you could just adopt a policy. A policy would be fine. Well, it turns out a policy has not been fine, because for three years people haven't been doing that. Now, to your point, um, Ms. Mrs. Rain, um, so uh, in uh, June we will be doing our reappointments. Um, and I think one of the things I would like to know, I don't know if our office can do this easily. I've done it sort of on a back of the envelope type of thing. Who's posting and who isn't? Who's recording and who isn't? I certainly think any board or committee that we are appointing, I want to be following these bylaws. The other elected boards and whatever, I don't know what we've got, what teeth we've got to enforce, but if we're appointing people, I want to know that they're doing what we've said is important to us. Um, so what do you guys think about that? I mean, I think it should be done, but I'm wondering about the enforcement. I mean, if somebody doesn't do it, they don't do it. I think we'll have to ask Kate what we can do. Like, you know. You don't want, you don't want to, I mean, it, you, can, you don't want to hurt somebody. No, 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 I'm, no I mean. I'm not, I'm definitely but these, not. But they're, yeah. they're, they're volunteers, so. But that, that's where my reluctance comes in. Because, I, you know, I, I want to encourage people. It, it, it seems right, right? Like, transparency, you, all of that. I agree with all of that stuff. But you want to encourage people that maybe aren't technologically savvy and maybe struggle with that. You don't want to penalize them for no, trying well, to No, I think we could do a training, right? Lynn, couldn't we teach people? Yeah, they had training on oh, how I was to say, you, Well, no, you, the you department, horse, the, the secretaries and everybody, but I mean, like, say, Joe, I, I don't know, I'm just saying you, but, like, you're probably already doing oh. it, but say, like, the High Street Park League, what if they don't have somebody who knows how to post? You know, on the website. What if they don't have that? Like, could they give, maybe that's part of the problem. You know, could they give it to our office to post? Could we teach them how to post? I think we should teach them okay. how to post. I personally do not want to be responsible for the entire town's You would You wouldn't be responsible for the entire town because... It wouldn't have come to that because... No, no, it would not because, for instance, planning has their own staff, uh, conservation has their own staff, Board of Health has their own staff. It would really just be a couple of committees that we, that are our committees, their select board committees, that wouldn't have their own staff. I mean, even that, like Community Preservation's got Shirley Schindler. She's their scribe, you know, and there might be other people that, you know, other other boards and committees that are more technologically savvy and they would be fine. I really think it would only be one or two that are like, oh, we don't know how to do this. And maybe we could train them. We can talk about this at another meeting, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because I was looking for minutes for one particular committee, which I shall not mention, and they haven't posted since 2022. Okay, so that's a problem. That's is the it the drainage committee? It's not the drainage <laughs> committee, and it's not about retention basins, okay? It's not no. about that? No, so don't don't taunt me. I just want to say, um, I'm just kidding. Okay. No, they haven't, uh, um, they haven't met in school. Yeah. They haven't met in a long time, that's all. They're notorious the for... The secretary. Yeah, oh, I, so oh before that, it's good. All right, um, okay, so anything else? Any? Are there any other articles or things that you guys were hoping that would be in here that aren't in here? Okay, all right. Um, and of course, we don't have the budget because we don't have the budget yet because it's all hinging on what happens tomorrow night. I hope to the extent you guys are available tomorrow night, you are able to um, to, to go to the assessment. Um, okay. Um, 
the drainage committee before. That. Okay, so then that brings us to approving minutes. Now, I just want to be clear, we're approving executive session minutes that have been approved in executive session. Mm -hmm. um, these are all minutes that we are taking a vote to approve and not release. So I will entertain a motion to approve but not release the January 9th, 2024 executive session, January 23rd, 2024 executive session, February 6th, 2024 executive session, February 13th, 2024 executive session, and February 27th, 2024 executive session. So moved. Second. To um, approve and not release. Um, all in favor? Aye. Fantastic. That brings us to one day liquor licenses. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the baby shower on 421-24, the wedding on 713-24, and the party on 9724. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Great. Committee updates. Um, anybody have anything burning? No. We're, we're meeting next Pressing. Thursday, I think. Okay. All right. That's Sorry. awesome. I just want to let people know that with uh, with the plan going to the planning board, um, it's probably going to heat up with some of our attendees for the High Street Park. So our next two meetings are uh, April 1st and April 15th. Okay. In this room? Yes, it, it'll be here. Uh, okay. Laquan Property Reuse Committee. Um, I had a thought which I wanted to pass by you guys. I'm wondering, we've all heard from Tony what his kind of thought process was. I'm wondering whether it might be a good idea for us to just have a public forum, just a public session where people can just give us their ideas for what they want with that property. So although we've heard from Tony, and that might be a starting point, just to see what other ideas people have. What do you guys think about that? Just have like a brainstorming session open to the public. Sure. I've seen things on the book about, you know, people saying, oh, you should sell it and build on it, and other people, you know, I mean, they, they jump into the fray. The, the board had taken a vote not to sell it, right. and uh, mostly because, honestly, the money that we would get would not be worth what we're giving up, which is a prime piece of real estate that we will never, exactly. ever, ever and get I'm, again. I am absolutely 100% on board with that 100-year 100, 100 plan. Yep. I yep. am. I think that's a brilliant use of that property, but we should listen to. I mean, so that's what I. I, th I just yeah. thought, you know, it's, only one it's of us. we've got the we've got the blank footprint. So I thought, yeah. you know, let's just yeah. have everybody come together and let us know what they'd like to have done with it, and then we can take it under advisement and then figure out what the next step is. What do you I, guys I, think about that? I agree with that a hundred percent. My my one worry I have, and I mentioned it at the Camp Kwani meeting, is I don't like just having one. This is our option. We're either going to do it or we don't. Because that option, and I, I think it's, it, I don't, there's no cost, but it, it's it going to be extremely expensive. And I, I would like to see two or three options for the town to be able to vote on, even if it's, you know, from the town planner or from somebody else. But there's got to be, there's got to be another option other than Tony's plan. And I love Tony's plan. Don't get me wrong, but it's just the cost of getting to Tony's plan that that bothers me. Well, I think I hear what you're saying. A lot of what he's talking about, um, particularly all the fields and everything, community preservation money 100% can pay for all of that. And they've already discussed it as a committee. Um, no vote's been taken because, you know, but um, it wouldn't be additional taxation. Um, so you've got that. But, um, and in terms of presenting three plans to uh, voters, we typically don't do that. What we would do is probably have the three plans presented to us, and then we would make a decision as a board about what we feel the strongest about and present that to people. Um, it's, that's, you gotta, you gotta narrow it down and we have to take a lead on it, but at least maybe have something else presented to us that we can yeah. noodle. Yeah. I mean. So given that, I think we yeah, definitely I, need to have. I, yeah. I also don't see anything wrong with just Backing a great sounding plan that I, would benefit I, the whole town. It would benefit I, all the kids. It yeah. would benefit the senior center. It would benefit the library. It would benefit the whole. I agree. I, I Look, I, to be clear, I like Tony's plan. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do. Um, and I think it was a stroke of genius. Well, we should and, listen to what and, other people say. And I, I applaud him. Absolutely. But I just want to make sure 
that we're being inclusive mm -hmm. and that we are gathering others thoughts because maybe there's another thought out there that we yep. haven't even entertained yep. so that's kind of I so I just wanted to I because so that's my long-winded way of saying I think I'm going to pump the brakes on any further McQuan reuse committee meetings and open have it have some kind of a public forum which I haven't even mentioned to Miss Green so um, she, <laughs> we'll have to discuss that <laughs> <laughs> well we'll discuss that later How many um, people are on the McQuan it's three committee. three voting members. Okay. Yeah. I think somebody was thinking of leaving. We were just leaving. Yeah, she did just leave. Okay. Yeah, so we, we need another member, but uh, three three I should say three citizens at large and me. Oh. So it's yeah. Um, okay. So uh, that was that. Um, any other Whitman Hanson Regional Agreement Committee? I don't think we'll probably meet until after the whole school budget has mm -hmm. settled. Um, and I don't, I don't have anything else. Um, uh, we already heard the town administrator report. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn to what? Well, you don't we have to do this way to personnel. Well, yeah. It's open session. Um, we do, but I'm wondering. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We'll have a little biology break, yes. and then we will. Um, open it, the wage okay. personnel. Does that sound okay with you? Yeah. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn um, from our open session. The plan will be to have a short break, um, recess, and then we will come back. Um, Mr. The gavel will be turned over to Mr. Weeks for wage and personnel. And then we will adjourn to executive session and we will not be coming out in open session. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right, great. Going right into it. Boom. All right, perfect. <laughs> All right, we have uh, welcome to the Wage and Personnel Board meeting, Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. Supposed to be at 7:45, but we're starting at 7:53. Um, new business. We're going to call right into new business. Review the of uh, the wage and personnel bylaw classifications. I'll pass it over to Miss Green, who can walk us through this, please. So, um, actually, Mr. Chair, we um, will have Mary Akady from the Collins Center joining us to go over the classification study. Okay. Um, so, if we could maybe take the bylaw out of order, um, she will be joining us just at, at eight o'clock. Okay. Um, so, do you want to go into the, the classification compensation study, or is that, well, that's what uh, she's doing, that's right? What she's so, yes. what about? Joe, yeah. the bylaw. I, I'm just trying to go where it is in the agenda. Where is it in the agenda? R She's number review. two in the agenda. So right. bylaw is number one. Right. Oh, okay. I, oh, okay. I was going in order. Skip I'm sorry. That's why I'm confused. I was going in order. All right. So I'm review sorry. of the oh, wage okay. personnel bylaw. Okay. All right. <laughs> Can you walk us through that, please? Yes. Thanks. Okay. So um, we have Article 7 um, of the annual special town meeting. Um, this is the uh, classification compensation bylaw uh, with personnel. So what we did was, um, as you can see, we have a column for that was from the October 2nd, 2023 special town meeting and the basically the salaries and wages. And then what we have for our May annual town meeting 2024, um, most of the salary ranges have remained the same. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some, some changes. You'll notice under Section 11B, administrative and or full-time, uh, we have the executive assistant, and these will be in blue on the sheet. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we have $28 to $38 on October 2nd, 2023. We've just changed that from $28 to $40, um, May 6th. And if you notice, right below is the assistant to the police chief. This is in line with the assistant to the police chief um, on terms of that. Um, our veterans agent, annual salary. So what we did was um, for October 2, October 2nd, 2023, we had it at 55,062, but um, with the 2% increase puts it just over the 62. So we've increased that from 55,000 to the 63 on the range. Okay. Um, the, the remainder of the salaries uh, and, and wages are the same until we get to our animal inspector. Um, so the animal inspector for October 2nd, 2023. Uh, the 1,600 figure should be 35, was it 3,200 or 3,500? 3, 3,500. Um, 
the town clerk said that 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 amount there was voted at either 32 or 3500 at the October special town meeting. So we, we've just we put it on the May special town meeting for um, that amount. Because okay. she in the budget, the interim inspector has already surpassed the $1,600 wage amount. Um, the assistant veteran agent, the committee clerical, emergency clerical. Um, in the October, they had them $15 to $15, but we corrected that for the May, $15 to $25 for the range for those three positions. Um, and then the public buildings custodian, um, it was at $18 to $24. Um, there's just a slight increase from $18 to $30 in the May um, town meeting. And that, basically, those are the only changes on this. Um, under the explanation, we will be updating the explanation to talk about those positions um, and the changes. Right now, it's just the old language, but we'll update it to the new language. Um, and also in this, there were some positions in the bylaw that are now union positions, mm -hmm. which would be the Camp Kiwani event coordinator is now a union position. Okay. And um, what was the other position that was the union position? Um, Transfer station. And, and uh, transfer station. So they had transfer station positions, again, in the part-time positions, but those are union positions, so that position, those position, that position was removed from the bylaw as well. Um, and that um, basically covers. Also, too, just to let the, the board know, in Section 11A, professional positions, and then Section 11B, administrative, in or full-time, if you'll notice, um, recreation director and grant writer procurement administrator no, are they won't see that. It's gone. in section A. We will be removing that that yeah, position. No, it's gone. Oh, it's already gone. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I must be okay. looking at an, an older one. So it, yeah, it's showing on this one. They're they're double, but they will be removed from one of, okay. from um, section A and moved to section B. Okay. Yes. Well, well. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> To the extent that it may take our building inspector a while to get his um, certifications to be the building commissioner, and to the extent we might need to pay somebody, where are we reflecting that? We can reflect that right, well, we have inspector of buildings part-time hourly rate, so we do have that position. But it wouldn't here. be an assistant inspector of buildings. Right. It's a building commissioner. Well, we have to create a position in here. Um, we'll have to create a position for that because we don't really know what someone else would charge us for that um, service. I just thought um, I'd bring it up because I know we're not going to use the individual that we were previously going to use, and so we may get yeah. charged. Okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to have to look into that and see what we do, and we'll have to create a position under the part-time positions. Mm -hmm. Cash. Any other questions? The only thing I see is just a typo on the explanation that the D is missing in board. What's that? Um, yeah. 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 And I've noticed we haven't increased the milk inspector in a few years now, so. Well, you know, it's interesting because I was looking for the milk inspector yeah. on the budget and didn't find a milk inspector. So that's why I hadn't yeah. done anything with that line because I don't know who our milk inspector is and we don't have a line in the budget. So I have to yeah. actually ask our health agent about that. <laughs> I appreciate you looking into that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Because I, I did look at that. I, I looked at all these positions in the budget. It's too um, funny. And milk inspector, I did not see. So um, I could not put anything in for that one. They can make up to three hundred dollars a year. Yeah, big big money. Yeah. Keep in big mind money. it's arranged though. We don't have to spend it just because it's in there. Don't give up your day job, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> you can find more in your couch cushion. Get to smell like sour milk and. Um, okay, so do you need us to take a vote on this? Um, um, and and yes, yeah, before um, that, there is one more that's proposed by the fire chief. Um, this is Article Thirteen on the special town meeting. Um, he's proposing the emergency management support position, um, which there's an explanation. It's the, this is requested um, to assist the emergency management director to assess hazards and prepare plans, as well as respond to emergencies and any other duties necessary by the emergency management director. Um, this is proposed by our um, 
fire chief, and he poses a salary range of $16 an hour to $22 an hour. Okay. And that's a separate article? Yeah, why yeah, is it a separate article? I presented it as a separate article, so I, um, I could, kept it separate, but I, I think it needs to be included. Well, it could yeah. be because it's a new position. Yeah. If you include it, what do you do with the explanation? You just add the explanation? Yeah, you could just say, yeah. please don't yeah. wear four line yeah. item, yeah. 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 And would this, since it is a wage and personnel um, line, would, would it be the fire chief that proposes this technically, or wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be the wage of personnel? Well, we, it actually would be proposed by all, the fire chief, management director, and the wage of personnel, um, so that they know where where the position came from. Okay. Unless if, if Kate has any, if Kate lets us know otherwise, we'll just we'll correct that. All right, sounds good. So, do you need us to take um, a vote on either one of these things? Because it yes. looks like we're, yes. it's already placed in the warrant. So. Um, all right, I will, I guess, entertain a motion to uh, place Article, s well, how would, it's already placed, so how would I, how would we go to, on this? To, um, to accept the changes in the um, Section 11A, professional positions, Section okay. 11B, administrative and or full-time, and then, um, sorry. So, so how about, um, I want to take a motion to accept the changes presented in the Article 7 and have that be reflected in an updated. So, sections 11A to 11E. So moved. Uh, with the addition of the building commissioner? With the addition of the building commissioner and the addition of the emergency management yep. support person. So, we got a motion. A second? Second. All right. All those in favor? All right. And then. Um, I'll entertain a motion to um, accept the changes in Article 13, line GG, emergency management support person. To be merged in with the Article 7? I'm struggling with it because it's two separate articles, so I'm not, and it's not even our proposed article, so I'm not 100% sure how you want us to word a, mo a vote for this. Um. That to incorporate the um, building commissioner position and the emergency management position, uh, emergency management support person um, into the wage and in, uh, classification and compensation article. Let's go with that. Sounds legit. <laughs> <laughs> so you looking for an article? Looking for a motion, so yes. All right, you get a motion. Second. Any, second. Any other discussion? All, right. All those in favor? All right. All right. Five, Five zero. And then, um, are, we, are we still going to skip over two? Well, I'm just seeing if she's available now. Um. Um, while we're doing that, we can look at approving meeting minutes, January 9th, 2024. Well, what about annual reviews? We could look at that. I'm assuming she's going to need to um, talk us through that. that. I don't want to divide her attention too much. I entertain a motion to approve the minutes January 9th, 2024. So moved. Yeah, right, get a motion. Second. I Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. All right. 5-0. And then we'll go to, uh, assuming that we're still waiting on, on, on agenda item two, we'll go into agenda item three, annual reviews, uh, department heads. Okay. So we do have a, um, we do have a form that was um, created by um, Ms. McDowell here. Um, for and it, it's it's kind of like a, a self-assessment form again. Um, it <laughs> provides the department heads with different um, ratings, different right. categories, similar to the town administrator mm -hmm. uh, review. It, it's almost fashioned almost in the same <laughs> area. Well, so um, at the this next department head okay. meeting, I'm going to pass these out to the department heads, um, and I'm going to explain to them about this and ask them to complete one for themselves. Um, I'm also going to, I, I have been in touch with our Maya e, um, EPA representative, and we are putting together a um, training program for department heads as well. I was going to ask that. Okay. Um, yeah, so we actually are going to be um, talking on Thursday um, about Great. topics and about putting together a training program for them. 
So that will be, you know, for their assessment and then for the employee assessment um, as well. Uh, this was also going to be um, a performance evaluation. We will help the department heads with this. And we have presented um, the evaluation to the union so that they could look at the evaluation. So um, hopefully we'll have all of this up and running, um, I would say, within the next two months. Fantastic. Good. Can I have a question, I have a yep. question on that? On page one, it lists five being excellent and one being poor. On page seven, it leads, lists four being outstanding and one being that inexperienced. Mm-hmm. Which is oh yeah. Point. So we, we, what we're going to do? We should we're going to remove the last page. We're going to remove that rating scale because okay. it's, it's yeah, it's not um, it, it's not in line with the first page. seven page seven. Mm -hmm. That's on page seven. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we will we will need that. I would suggest we on that. It's on the TA evaluation. Yes. Also. Same thing. Yes. And let's see. I don't I don't see that rating scale on the. Well, actually, it does. Yeah, have, the, it, it is it, on the employee one. Yeah, so. it's on all of them. So we're, we'll plan on removing the rating scale on the employee one as well, and then using the same scale that's on. That, that way, we keep it consistent across the board. Um, so are, are these? So are all three of these going to be used? Used? So. So it was the department head self assessment and the annual employee self assessment that will be used. Um, the performance evaluation, that just in the form that could possibly be used, but the union was presented with the annual employee self-assessment. They were presented with that form, so that this is the form that we're going to use. Because okay. uh, as the union, this is the form that they have seen. Okay. All righty. All right. So moving in the right direction on that. And are we going to have a policy for when um, evaluations happen? We are working on the policy right now. Actually, there's just some tweaks left for the um, personnel policies. So where these are annual, we will most likely try and work these closer to the end of the fiscal year, um, you know, by maybe June 1st, the end of the fiscal year. So we, we have a direction come July 1. Right. Um, if, if that's the will of the board. Um, so do you need us to take a vote on these forms? Because... Um it looks like it's it's more informational. We still have to wait on the union to accept it and everything as well, right? So the union the union has has they do have a copy of the employee evaluation mm -hmm. form. Uh, the department heads will get a copy of their form. And actually, we did have a, a department head meeting um, a few months back where they were given a copy of this form. So I will give this out to them and I will ask them to actually fill it out. Okay. You know, so there's practice, no roadblock. So they can. Out. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I entertain a motion to accept the, the forms as presented. So moved. Second. All right. Any other discussion? The only thing I, I, I just happen to notice here on the right. annual employee performance evaluation, there isn't one, two, three, four, five. Um, it's got the same. Um, right. We, we we have to we have to take we have to basically add. The so are you going to use the one that's the one. annual department head self-assessment, 54321? That's going to be... We're going to move that So to whatever employee. you give to the union should have that on it. Don't give them any, you know what I mean? Don't give them the wrong information to evaluate. Right. No, we're, we're going to give them the same rating okay. scale. All right. They, they will get the same rating scale. Okay, so should we put in the, the motion uh, to include the amendments that, yes. that Ed is talking about? So yes. have the motion reflect that. Um, any other further discussion on this? All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. We're good. And then we have, it says employees. B. Um, well, it, um, the same, right? that's, Mr. Chair, if you will, I, I see that Miriam yes. Katie has joined us from the Collin Center um, to go over the uh, classification yeah, and competition. We covered both. Ooh, one, so we did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I just want to make sure we're good. Yeah. Okay. So now we'll go back to classification compensation study presented by the Collin Center. Yes. All right. Hi, Mary. Can you hear us? Oh, I think you're muted, Mary. I can hear you. Can you hear me? There we go. Yeah, yes, yes. There we go. And I, I do believe I, you have the ability to share. Um, All right. So what time did you start your meeting? So we had some other items to, um, to go on. So we were about, what, 10, 10 of 8? <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say, are 
they're like, you really tired? Because I can just, you know, skip it. No. <laughs> oh, no, our meeting, the, the full meeting started at 6 o'clock. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Don't touch anything. No, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to turn it so Mary can see the the, the board members. Hey, that's okay. I, I don't need to see them because I just need to see the presentation. There you so, go. Hello, everybody. Nice okay. to see you. Um, Lisa, what's the plan? I'm gonna like I did earlier today. Walk through the presentation and then take questions. Yes. Yes. Okay. And have these people seen the report? Yes, we have. It. They have. Okay, great. So I'm going to not waste your time. I'm going to go through my slides, and then I'll take questions at the end. How's that? Perfect. Thank you. Alrighty. Now, if I have set my screen up properly, no, it says I'm not able to screen this okay. year. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's see. Share screen. The three dots up in my this. square. All right, you should be able to share it now. There we go. You don't. You don't. You don't. All right. All right. Let me see if I'll I can get this. There we go. There we go. All right. So, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to your classification and compensation study at eight, whatever, eight twelve on a Tuesday night. You are all very dedicated, so I appreciate your time. Uh, as you know, we were engaged by the uh, town to do a classification and compensation study. I'm going to walk you through the process and some of the results. You've seen the report, so that's helpful. I think some of the narrative in the report is more helpful than some of the summary um, documents. You'll be shocked to know that people want to jump to the salary recommendations, and what they miss is how important the job description and the classification structure is. So. I'll walk through the report and then take any questions you may have. So the project manager was Jennifer Rambaldi. She is not able to be with us tonight. She was at the meeting earlier this morning. Um, I am on the project team, but my role is to also, I am the HR practice manager for the uh, Collins Center. I've got 30 years in municipal government. I have been with the Collins Center 14 years. Prior to that, I was lucky to be home with my kids for a number of years. And prior to that, I was the HR director in the town of Watertown. Prior to that, I was in the town of Barnstable. Prior to that, I was in the town of Wellesley. And prior to that, I worked for the Massachusetts uh, Department of Public Works. So you can date me and age me by the time, uh, because it hasn't been the Mass Department of Public Works since Governor Weld was elected. So if you do the math, I'll be 60 this summer. Uh, so, what are the benefits of doing one of these studies? Obviously, you all decided it was worth it to take a look at the classification and compensation. I, I really, um, she freeze? I think she froze. Mary, I think you're frozen. She just tore it back in. She's frozen. Yeah. There we go. Mary, you're frozen. You just meet, reaching for send over there. Yeah. Like, all right. You can't do anything. I can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, can, okay, there we are. Yep. No, 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 no. Again. Sign in. It says up there, sign in. That's, no, that's oh, not something. That's for her. That's for She's her. on dial up. She's got an AOL mm -hmm. modem. Here, you're, you're frozen again. You have a good connection? Yeah. Anybody know any good show tunes? Hmm? Okay. What should I do? Nothing? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay, she's going to log back in. There we go. Yeah, I can see you. Yeah. Yep, we okay. can see you. I'm going to try again. Here's my issue. I am in the town of Marshfield by the ocean ah, that, because yep. we're doing an MMHR training tomorrow in Marshfield for the uh, supervisory training. So I'm going to I'm going to try again, yeah. and we will go through it quickly. You you, and, may, uh, you may benefit by turning off your camera then. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. 
but will you be able to see my screen if I do that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. we should. Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera. And now you should be able to share your screen. There we go. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean we okay. can't hear? Can you hear me now, Lisa? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Okay, great. So that may have worked. So the benefits of doing a study. You get accurate position descriptions. Uh, you can use that for employee evaluation, which I just heard you talking about. It's really important to have, you know, one of the expectations in a job. We want to make sure pay determinations are objectively made. We want to make sure that the classifications are fair and equitable. And we want you to comply with laws and regulations like the Best Pay Equity Law and the Americans with Disabilities Act. So, my favorite slide is to say what a class and compensation study is not. It's not a reclassification or upgrade study. So often people look at it for the money. We look at it for what is the right structure for the town. It's not a performance evaluation. It's about the job, not about the person. So sometimes people say, well, I do more. I'm better at my job. We don't care how good somebody is at their job. We want to know what their job description should be, and that's what we're evaluating. It's not a staffing level study. Oh, how many hours do we need? How many people do we need? We're evaluating the roles and responsibilities and assigning that to a job description and a classification level. Um, while we did collect some benefit information, this is not a total compensation benefit and benefit study. You know, what you pay in benefits, what the perks are to the jobs, that's not all captured in a salary study. Um, but we do have a good relative um, outcome. Our methodology okay, for the position descriptions, we questionnaires, we did individual interviews, we drafted job descriptions, we uh, asked for edits and comments by employees and supervisors, and then we finalized position descriptions. The position descriptions are the most important part of the study. So many people think of it as the salary study, but it really is getting the classification and the job descriptions accurate, which is the priority. So when we evaluate the positions, we use a standard point factor system. Uh, we evaluate characteristics like supervision received and exercise, education experience, what are the requirements for the job, how complex are the jobs, who are your contacts, who are your stakeholders, and really what is the environment and the physical skill required. All of these have weighted point factors. The system we use is standard across the industry in Massachusetts. You'll find there's a handful of consultants. We all use the same methodology. We like to think we do it better than others, but really, um, it really is a, a uniform system. And then what we do at the end of that is we group it, all the positions, into a classification or grade. So the structure we came up with for your town is that there really are, there's really three grades of department heads. We put in the town administrator as the fourth to show the relativity. And you'll see that, you know, this, the ones that we recommend in the C level are your, your core kind of cabinet level uh, department heads. The B level is your, 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 not your middle managers, but they don't have the scope and scale that the, the C level does. And the A level are a little bit more narrowed and focused in their supervision and responsibility. So what we then do is we use that classification to create a market survey. So we were able to um, distribute a survey to area municipalities. Sometimes people think that we want to make sure that we match our, our community. We want the same population. We want the same budget. We want the same whatever it is, widgets that we produce. The reality is a market survey, survey is where is your labor market? 
who do you lose people to? Who can you attract people to come work for you? So it really is a regional and a geographic analysis. It's not if we were doing an operations study, like you would do for a public works and say, how many road miles, how many pieces of equipment do you have? This is really about where do you pull uh, employees from? How far will they drive to come to work for you? What is the labor market? What we do is we convert everything to hourly wages. Most of your positions in this grouping are work 35 hours a week, so we use that as the standard, but we convert it to an hourly wage so our comparisons are accurate. For example, your salary, annual salary for 35 hours a week uh, is different than somebody making the same wage, somebody working 40 hours a week. By comparing it, by converting it to an hourly rate, we can we are able to compare apples to apples. We evaluate both the average and the median so that we can see how the integrity of the data is. If the, the average and the median are different, we know that there's some sort of outlier. So we want to make sure that we evaluate those data points. There's a chart within the report that refers to why things could be an outlier. It has to deal with what is the title comparison, how many data points do we have, is the position elected or appointed, do they have wear more than one hat in their job. All of those things impact the analysis of the data. In the analysis of the data, it starts out as math and science, but at some point it becomes the art of knowing what the culture and the climate is within the town. What we do to evaluate the um, minimum and maximum of the recommended rates of a range, we tend to highlight the maximum of the range because many municipalities have pay ranges that they're not using and they tend to have most of their employees at the maximum. So unless they've updated their system recently, we find that the maximum is the more accurate uh, number to use. So what we do is we look at the salary data and use the survey data for the maximum pay to then create the pay range. So we take the recommended maximum and subtract 30% of that to make it a 30% range. So that's how we coalesce all the data, the current rates, what the survey shows, and what the groupings are to create the recommended pay range. We've recommended a pay range the town can decide whether it wants to stay with ranges, move to steps, move to quadrants. You may want to implement a performance um, merit system of some sort. So it depends on what you're looking to create moving forward, what type of system you want to adopt. If you're going to use for department heads only, we recommend a range system, not a step system, but you have some unionized um, department heads. So you may end up bargaining over a step system or um, a quadrant with a midpoint uh, kind of system. That's totally up to you, but you have the parameters of the recommended ranges, which are based on your current structure and the salary data from the survey. Uh, the labor market survey, these are the municipalities who responded to the survey. Abington News in the report, Abington, Duxbury, East Bridgewater, Marshfield, Norwell, Pembroke, Clifton, Rockland, and West Bridgewater, which is a pretty good foundation of survey. When you see this many municipalities, you'll see that the data equalizes itself and we have a really good sample of the data. Um, you can see here, these are your, what I want to highlight for you is your existing pay ranges. You really don't have pay ranges. I don't fully understand the history of how we got here to these minimums and maximums, and are they real or are they just representative of what has happened in the past? But ranges of, you know, one, two, four, five, percent are not truly ranges. So clearly these are um, either individual rates that have been adjusted since the person started, and it might be all over the map. But most in the industry pay ranges run from 20%, 25%, 30%, 40%, 
30%, 30%. Sometimes we see 40%, but more than that really makes it difficult to hire at the beginning. Um, so you really don't have a compensation system. I think you have a, a, a decent grouping of positions, you know, based on the similar pay that are the maximums you can see by the your town's maximums. You've got some groupings in there, the, the high 30s, the, the high 40s, the low 40s, but with no rhyme or reason to it. So it's clearly been about who has been the individual in the job. And that's why you hired us, so that we could come up with a system for you. But this is to highlight when you look at the data, why it's so skewed, because you really don't have a system. So when you look at the survey minimum, you can see that your minimum in the market, so if you see this column here, Hanson minimum, that's what you currently call your minimum for people. And then you see the survey average minimum and median minimum, and you can see that in many cases, there's a handful, in many cases, your town pays above what the market does for the minimum. And that's okay. It doesn't mean your people are overpaid in any way, shape, or form. It means that your minimum is above the minimum of the market. So that indicates you might be able to recruit people in for most of these positions, but whether you can keep them or not is at, in, is at question. So you do have a few positions. You see the red font. Those are the positions that are your current um, minimum. And again, it's your current minimum, not what they're actually being paid. Your current minimum is below the market. That's an indicator that your pay scale starts too low. Now, we don't have in here what the incumbents actually make. Most of them make more than your minimum, so that means they may, in fact, be within the pay range. So don't look at this as saying, oh, your veterans officer is underpaid by blank dollars. It just shows that the minimum of your range. Now, if your veterans officer makes $19.75 an hour, that person is underpaid by that $13. But my suspicion is your veterans officer makes between the 1975 and the 3317. And the 3317, um, you know, you know, if they make in that, it's within the market. So that's a key thing to look at. Just because you see the red font doesn't mean the person is underpaid. It's your range is off. So then when you see the maximum survey, you can see a different picture. You can see all the red font. That means that your market, your maximum is well below the market average and median. So what this tells us is you may start people out of the good part. No. Right at the good part. Right at the good part. No. Yeah. The cliffhanger. Right at the good part. Mm -hmm. oh. That's well below the forty three to forty one dollars. Lisa, can you still hear me? We can now. We lost you for a little bit, but you're back now. <laughs> okay, I'm back because I got a little notice saying my internet was up. Uh, yeah, gone again. The same notice you just got. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we have to raise some stuff. I'm confused about these ranges. Well, of we have to raise it if we want to recruit. Yeah. If you want to keep this to me tells that. me where to keep no, them. No. This is the retention. We want to keep them, exactly. Yeah, the first one was a was a recruitment. This one's a retention. And I noticed the longevity things that yeah. other the, towns have done. These are the results of the study that they did. That are not reflected in Bridgewater. So where are they getting that range? I think she's making them. What's that? How much did they get? So they got they got pay data when they got all the pay data from all for all our departments. And then what they did was they put everything together based on, and also looking at those other departments. Yeah, I'm looking at why she's looking saying that ours is so tight. Okay, I'm back. Uh, okay. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll, um, I'll talk. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. 
it is another dip. Oh, oh. Mason, can you hear me? You we, we can hear you, yeah. We're all yeah. set. All right, okay. there we go. Can you kind of start this a little bit over because we we no. kind of missed you a little bit because you, you went in and out. So. Just this sheet. Just this, just, just this sheet. Right. So what this sheet is showing is how the, your ranges are out of whack with the market. So on the previous sheet, it showed that your minimum pay was kind of okay. But because you have, when you go back to those percentages that I showed you of 2%, 4%, the market is a 30% range, a 20% range. So you may be to recruit people, but you're not competitive with the market because your maximum pay is way underneath. So when you look at the veteran's agent, your range, for some wacky reason, is $19.75 to $35.90. You can see that the $35.90 is well under the, you know, the, um, the market of $43. You know, so you can see that um, you're well below on the maximum. So that's the issue. So when you look at, this is what we have recommended for pay ranges, um, and that takes into account what you currently pay, what you should be paying in terms of what is the labor market. So we've showed this in the hourly rate and in the annual rate, rate based on 35 hours a week. Um, so we are recommending in most cases, your employees fall within the range we're recommending. There's a few that are outside of the range, but that means that they've been underpaid for a while. So you'll have to do that analysis of what does that look like. Then on implementation, you'll need to make decisions on how to implement. Are you placing them within the range with an increase? Are you moving, how are you gonna move them through the range? Are you adjusting the compensation schedule for the market and cost of living? We recommend that every other year or so you actually do apply a cost of living or a market adjustment so that you don't fall behind. But you'll see that we've created pay ranges for you so you have future growth for people and that can be based on their performance evaluation. So, um, or it can be a step system based on annual, um, just longevity. You could tie it to merit, you could tie it to an evaluation. Those are the policy decisions you're gonna have to make. So each one of the slides I showed you is in the report. Um, so what I can do now is answer questions or you could digest and then send me questions through Lisa. It's really up, up to you. This is a lot to unpack. Yeah, um, it's, it's a lot for a day. Yeah. Um, I, I'm so, um, you, yeah. Mr. Chair, so I'm wondering like, what, what are our next steps, if any? What are we going to do with this information? So typically what boards and committees do is they accept the report. You know, I don't know that you need a vote to accept the report. And then you kind of digest it, analyze it, and whatever your process is to adopt or recommend it to whomever you would be making recommendations to. Um, you know, we recommend that you implement a new system for July 1. A lot of that goes to how are you going to fund it, what does it look like for COGS. You're going to have to do that analysis of if we create these ranges, what we recommend is, for example, say you're going to implement for July 1 of uh, 2024, for example. We recommend that you say, okay, for July 1 of 2024, we were gonna give everybody a 2% increase anyways. So what we say is apply your 2% increase to everybody's current pay and place them in the recommended ranges. For those people who current pay falls into the range, it's only gonna cost you that 2%. For those who have been historically under the market, 
and I don't know how many people there are, they would get brought up to, if you apply the 2%, they would get brought up to the minimum, which might be a bigger cost for you. So it's really about running the scenarios of what would it cost to implement these new ranges. Then you've got to decide, how are we gonna move people through the ranges each year? I heard you just talking about performance appraisal. Was that going to be tied to pay? Do they have to meet a certain standard to move up within the range by 2% or 3%? Like in many union contracts, they get a percentage step plus a cost of living. It's up to you to decide what system you want, and you don't need to decide by you, you know, across the board. There may be other benefits with union employees that you want to treat differently. So it really is a time now to run some analysis based on what your policy decisions would be. We're happy to, you know, help help you do that when you come up with ideas of what you're looking for. We don't know if you want steps, whether you want ranges or quadrants with midpoints and maximums. There's all different policies for you to consider. It really does depend on how you want to approach it. All right. Well, thank you very, very much. You gave us a lot to consider. Right. This is great. I'm so sorry that I'm going in and out. I'm, uh, you know, I wish I was out on the ocean in Marshfield, um, but uh, <laughs> I'm just with bad Wi-Fi, so I apologize. No, this is fantastic. You really gave us a lot to think about, so we really do appreciate taking the time and walking us through this. Um, all right, well, reach back out with any follow-up because it takes a while to digest all the information. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. We'll try to filter all of our questions and everything through Lisa, and then maybe if uh, we have to circle back to you, we'll uh, we'll call you. Happy you to do it. All right, take care. Thank you all so right. much. Have Thank you. Day. Take Thanks, care. Mary. Have a great night. All right, bye-bye. All right, so we have a lot to think about, and uh, I don't know about you all, but I'm getting to that point where my brain's a little fried. Uh, so uh, yeah. do, uh, does anybody have any last-minute questions before I uh, ask to adjourn? That we've cut went through everything. Anything um, that I don't. I don't have any. I mean, I'm, I'll, at the risk of stating the obvious, um, I don't think adjusting people's salaries at this point no. in our um, trajectory no. is something we can take on for the July first, which was what she had recommended. But, um, but we could talk about it at a different meeting. Yeah, I think when we're when it's a little bit. Uh, Fresher. Clearer and fresher, fresher. yeah. We can actually attack this in a, in a, in a much yes. more level-headed way. Um, any any other last-minute things? I don't want to stop anybody from having something nope. to say. Nope. All right. So with that, we've gone through everything. So uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved to. So moved. Uh, so moved. Yep. Uh, a second. Second. All right. All those in favor? All right. All and right. we're going to enter and executive session. Right back session. over to you. Right yep. Um, I will enter a motion to enter executive session pursuant to open meeting law chapter 30A section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares building litigation discussions. Executive session pursuant to open meeting law chapter 30A section 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel highway director executive session pursuant to open meeting law chapter 30a section 21a3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open okay. meeting may have a detrimental effect oh, oh, I'm, we're still in open session I'm reading our executive session um, so um, all right, I just totally lost my place. To discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, union negotiations with highway administrative police fire, and last but not least, executive session pursuant to open meeting law chapter 30A, section 21A7 to review and approve executive session minutes, March 12, 2024, we will not be, um, we, I'm entertaining a motion to enter executive session. We will not be um, exiting at, uh, executive session and going back into open session. So moved. Second. 
Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much.